I think it's time we start this, baby. Go to the Sanctuary of Surasthana. Let's do this. YouTube, welcome in to the latest rendition of the Wanderer. Archon Quest uh, interlude. Twitch chat, say hello to YouTube. YouTube, say hello to the Twitch chat. Oh, God damn, I swear to God, they will come for you. They won't because they, they well, they won't, but... Just say hello. If you enjoy the Archon Quest, please subscribe to the YouTube. We're getting close to 80k, uh, hopefully 100k soon. Uh, and if you like the Twitch content, then subscribe, Pog. Uh, uh, here we go. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Come I'm worried. Come on. Serious suggestions, please. I'm not trying to write a thriller here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? <laughs> an essay. That means facts and logic. God, I just want to say, I, I, I know we get quests and stuff every like five or six weeks, but I miss them every time and it just fills me with such joy getting to hear voice acting in the game again after five weeks, dude. I love it. I am going to say before we get into this quest, I am incredibly nervous and excited for it. Uh, obviously, I've already showed my concerns and everything in multiple other videos with, with multiple different factors. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, and uh, I'm hoping for the best. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? Oh, that voice. That's a Taurus soon a mystery. When so much remains unexplained, there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. He's British! Oh my god! Get this man a bottle of fucking water, dude! I can't believe he's fucking British! Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, huh? a mysterious person. I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Well, so am I. I don't yes, even know what it is. You came to me. So all the more reason to take my advice. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. <laughs> Who is this man? I'm so taken aback by the fact there's a full-on British dude in Subaru, dude. Uh, okay, but... <laughs> oh, look, Did one of it's them us. mention to Tara Suna? But that's all the way in Inazuma. True, we're going to find it's out more. Time is it kind of unusual for someone in Sumeru to want to write a paper about that? Uh... Everyone here is just oh, really? going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Guess people How... here are free to research pretty much anything. How can we think that it's weird for someone in Sumeru to want to research something from another continent when we literally had an entire goddamn world quest about what was her name in, in, in Azuma who wanted to travel to each and every different continent and so far has? For stories? Like, it's not that odd. Great! Let's go find out what this Tatarasuna mystery is all about. Yeah. Let's do it. No, not Arani. I can't remember her name. Inversion of Genesis! Let's go. Alright, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. Hmm. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. Kabuki Ugh. Mono. If only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about him, <laughs> this seems like the kind of thing he'd know about. Well, alas, <laughs> looking for me? <laughs> oh, you're the traveler, you say? Yes. Hmm. What, don't hump hey, me, British man. Face. Don't believe us? If you don't believe me, I'll go. No, no, of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. Oh? This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit, I started, uh, examining the evidence. Sorry. Oh, so what, for the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. Interesting. Wait, why is everyone saying her? Did I miss something? I mean, her. Typo? Oh, it was just the... Su I was going to say, I thought he's... I, I didn't think he said her, but the subtitles did. Interesting, fair. Uh, Traveler. I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Not really. <laughs> Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Hmm. Ah, uh, I see. I'm sorry, can't help this time. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. 
He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that... Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatara Suna. Okay. Uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, fair point. No. In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest <laughs> essay draft. God damn it. That just Let sounds me give so you some backhanded. Background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatara Suna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Apart from the sword maker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, the records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger. Someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. Okay, fair. Also, the other name that was just mentioned, that was re referencing the, the the guy that we I learned about in Ashikai's video, right? The, the Blade Master, where I think it was Nagamasa and someone else. It might be a different name completely that I'm thinking of. No? Dif oh, that was Niwa? Ah, oh, shit. Okay, those are different. Okay, fair. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This Kabuki Mono lived in Tatara Suna for a while before disappearing without a trace. And shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. Mm. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Mm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Seems a little fishy yes, to me too. my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! <laughs> Stop shouting! <laughs> He's just excited. Part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. <laughs> it just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma <laughs> over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Mm. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. He's reminded me of Benedict Cumberbatch in a movie that I watched literally last night, which was called, I think it was the imitation game, dude. It reminds me of Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Could it be? Wait, so there are two missing people in the story now? That's right. What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Yes. Oh, the swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin Art and so on? Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That We're makes clever. things easier. So basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin Art. Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, you left out the biggest detail of all. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. <laughs> or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most... Get on with it! <laughs> Get to the point, for Pete's sake. <laughs> According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. <gasps> Pretends to be shocked. A puppet? <laughs> the Shogun puppet that Electro Archon made should be ruling an Azuma with her as we speak. It couldn't be her. The Kabuki Mono has to be the Baladia, but what was he doing 400 years ago in Tadara Zuda? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. No, no, no. We had the surprise Pikachu look on our faces. We know nothing. Uh... <laughs> Jon Snow. Glare at Paimon and hope she keeps her mouth shut. <laughs> uh, no! Paimon just meant... Uh, how creepy. The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree. It does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, mm. take a look. Okay. I'll take a gander. Oh my Jesus fucking...
Well, YouTube, strap in, because we ain't skipping through this. Author Sawada, extract one. A man arrived in Tatarasuna around three in the afternoon. From afar, he spied laborers walking along the mountain roads towards the factories, their shoes scuffing along the jutting stones. They walked like people convinced that so long as they reach the fire raging in the mountain's belly, they might extract from it gems beyond price. Okay, Lord of the Rings. The mood that the sight inspired was ineffable. Beyond mere description for those not present to witness it. The man barked a cheerful greeting and sprinted to join the procession. There, a towering character who stood half a head taller greeted him with a heavy slap on the back, and yet his words were filled with respect. Do my eyes deceive me? Sir Miyazaki, I cannot think that the return trip here from Itazuma City could have been easy on you. Miyazaki smiled like a young man taking his first steps on that journey. Expression relaxed. Why, Katsugari, Inazuma is the realm of the almighty shogun. I sailed upon the fastest ship, strode upon the swiftest sea routes. What dangers could I have possibly faced? And what about the good news? There was some, naturally. The two burst into uproarious laughter, <laughs> roughhousing with the other workers until the pass end. A young man dressed in a linen shirt and wearing a headscarf gazed into the dancing flames of the furnace before him. Now, the flames of a forger unlike any other, for their intensity affects the resulting integrity of both metal and blade. So too, then, was the flame watcher an unusual individual. At his fingertips sat a lizard. What? And on his face, he wore a smile. The workshop was huge, and the furnace was deeper within. A reasonable person might think that there should have been many working alongside the Watcher. Yet he stood alone. Only when Katsuragi and Miyazaki strode into the room did the Watcher turn. This Watcher was Niwa, armory officer and administrator of Tatarasuna. Born to the Niwa clan, which served as one of the three pillars of the Ishin art, Niwa never argued with his siblings and was a worthy successor by all accounts. The post he received as a result of his high standing with those in power served as a statement unto itself. Miyazaki handed a well-bundled text to Niwa as he adjusted his expression. As, as he adjusted his expression is said, It is as you have said, sir, the elders of your clan in the city do not think highly of our plan, yet I still believe it to be worth a try. As such, I have found the proper vendors and procured the materials that you requested. Niwa studied the text and nodded. We should try some of these new forging techniques, whether Kaidahara says yay or nay. Katsuragi frowned, and with a single, with a sigh, he said, Forging is a precise and difficult undertaking. You know this better than most, sirs. And still you seek improvement each day with terrifying drive. As should my lord Nagamasa hear this. Uh, the sourness in his face shall be hard to miss. Niwa smiled, replying, And how goes the forging of your lord's great blade, Katsuragi? Katsuragi neither wanted to shame his master nor lie to his two friends. And yet he could not think of any way to deflect, and so groused, I see your ears are as keen as your hands, Sir Niwa. The jokes of us unlearned men are as nothing are before you. Miyazaki hid his grin. Upon hearing this, Niwa released the lizard from his hand into Katsuragi's palm. But just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came walking nearby. Their footsteps light with the celerity of youth. The head that peeked in was round and, in the light of the fires, looked like an oiled jewel. <laughs> the young man placed some boxed food at the side and, nodding, he prepared to leave. Katsuragi called out after him. What about your share? Aren't you going to eat it? The young man, upon hearing those words, found himself slightly at a loss. After a while, he answered, Very well, I'll try it. You are welcome to the food. We all eat the same fare, after all. Niwa said. The man nodded and left, seemingly deep in thought. Extract two. The Kabuki Bodo was by the coast. Sunset fell to the accompaniment of darkness. The band of twilight showed themselves naught, for in their place did thunderclowns royal, grumbling the omens of a coming rainstorm. Darkness filled the flesh of the sea, and the dusk bade the, the clouds to kneel upon the land, its supplication mirroring the Kabuki Mono, with knees bent and face pointed towards the waters. None passed that way, and none knew what he was waiting for in silence. Time passed, unmeasured and uncounted, till a black cloud suddenly tore free from the sky and began to circle the Kabuki Mono, bearing down on him like a nightmare. Though he was not aware at first, after his studying gaze was refined by time, he understood this cloud had marked him from the very start. Outbound, a fishing boat drew near. The lights of its bow flickered in and out of sight beneath falling sheets of rain. A mist unspooled across the area, stealing sight from the fishermen. 
repeatedly, he exclaimed, It is but dusk! How are my eyes darkened? Is there anyone that can deliver my boat upon safe tides? Like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat and was joined in its bereftness of direction. Like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline. Scant steps away, the kabukimono stood idle, slanting his head to study the grand wreck. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help, and with a plop, it landed at the Kabukimono's feet. He crouched to better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite out of it. Yet he did not, for the dark cloud swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean. The Kabukimono stared at it blankly, like an awakening dreamer. When he returned to himself, the clouds had scattered, as if they had never been there at all. As if they'd never be there at all. Sorry. Uh, as for the ship, could it have been struck down by a storm? Who was to know? Not the Kabuki Mono. Extract three. Kataragi sees the little silhouette. I'm kidding. Uh, rushed to the doorway and shouted, My lord, things go ill at the furnace. I have searched for Sir Niwa, but there is no trace of him. And much time has passed since Sir Miyazaki left to seek aid, but he has yet to send us any missive. Luck. Makoshi Nagamasa turned slowly, his face grave as one attending a funeral. He spoke then, his words heavy, laden. I wish not to say such words, Katsuragi, but Sir Miyazaki may never return. Katsuragi peered past Nagamasa's broad, stiff shoulders beyond the windows. The clouds above boiled in waves of black, as if darkness now was the only weather. I might even morph into an abyssal beast and devour Tatarazuda whole. Over ten people had already perished. That was why, why, Katsuragi recoiled as if struck. Yes! It was coming back to him, in dribs and drabs. That was why they had set out to seek aid. Miyazaki had been the first to set sail. The clouds had only just begun to form then. Traveling from Tatarasuna to Inazuma to ask for support was normally no great feat, and yet there had been no sign of his return. Then a second ship was sent, followed by a third and a fourth, till the Kabukimono himself had departed upon the tides. Under foul skies and ominous fortunes, it had been Katsuragi who had brought him back and treated him as his own. And it pained him greatly to see the lad go. Yet the situation in Tatarasuna was severe. Even should they sacrifice more lives, it would have been worth it to gain assistance from Inazuma City. Just need a second chat to, to be able to read an entire fucking light novel, Jesus Christ! Niwa was gone, and none could find him. Afterward, Nagamasa led a search party into the mountains in the area around the furnace, all to no avail. Folk began to wonder if Niwa might have encountered an accident, but worry soon turned to suspicion. And they wondered if they had fled, unwilling to bear the sin of having caused these incidents. The people grew ever more suspicious. Nagamasa himself strained against his discontent and fury. His face had grown to resemble the rumbling clouds above. Suddenly, a figure flashed by. Their presence did not go unnoticed by Nagamasa. He drew his blade and cut, though he only nicked the silken veil the intruder wore. For a moment, they swayed, and then, like a marionette pulled by strings, they moved behind Nagamasa. That's weird. Uh, Nagamasa, laughing darkly. Are you seeking someone, my lord? Niwa, perhaps? Nagamasa bellowed in fury. You dare address Sir Niwa directly. Yet the figure parted like mist before his falling blade, only to rematerialize beyond reach but not beyond sight. A ghastly apparition, in apparition indeed. Was it you who slew my people? Nagamasa howled and charged, held back only by Katsuragi's dis desperate grip. As his senses returned to him, he realized he was but an inch away from falling into the furnace. Oh my dear lord. It seems that the rest of this work remains unfinished. From the existing text, however, it is apparent that this is a novel of fantastical, colorful sensibilities born from an imagination well utilized. Jesus Christ, dude. Okay, that's kind of nuts. I'm now very excited that hopefully the rest of this is going to be voiced. <laughs> And please read my essay draft as no, well. No, fuck off. No fucking shot. You've got to be kidding me. Don't you fucking dare pop up with something else. You've got to be kidding me. No way, dude. Are you fucking serious? I'm taking a drink. I'm actually going lightheaded. This is insane. There's no way. No wonder this is four hours long. It's an hour of reading, dude. What the? Are you serious, dude? A brief analysis of possible events of historical importance in the Tatarasuna area. Details. This text belongs to a series of works sponsored by the Vahamuna's Veil Cutter Project. It is yet to be numbered. The author is Akaba. Abstract. The Tatarasuna area has always been a major pillar of Inazuma's smithing industry. Two incidents have occurred here, and the details behind the first are vague at best. I believe, however, that there might be a hit. Dude, you better not have a fucking another one after this. I swear to God, I'm losing my mind. 
Uh, I believe, however, that there might be a hidden story behind the events that transpired. Hence, this paper will attempt to analyze what may have unfolded from the available data. The Glossary. Tatarasuna area, Raiden Gokuden, Makoshi Nagamasa, Kabuki Mono. Introduction. This paper continues and expands the work of my mentor, Mr. Rumi, in his report on the haply hidden tales of Tatarasuna, and is intended to further this avenue of research. According to the data, the blade forging techniques of Inazuma were originally handed down from the Electro Archon, also known as the Raiden Shogun. Using the arts they inherited from their Archon, the people of Inazuma devoted themselves to the process of forging. However, strange rumors that do not quite fit the steely nature of metalwork yet linger about Tadarazuna, which was a central pillar of the forging industry. There, the Bakoshi and Niwa clans, along with the eccentric puppet, serve as the three windows of insight we need to investigate the truth behind what happened. Strange notes from the Tatarasuda area, their contents are as follows. Number one, perhaps I overstep, but I think that Sir Nagamasa's mood grows uh, better when he forges blades. The obsession to cleanse the stain from the name Makoshi must eat at him. Also, Sir Katsuragi uh, discovered a nameless eccentric while patrolling around the Nozuki beach. Number two, the inspector bought a certain number of jade steel ingots. Sir Katsuragi discussed matters of smithing deep into the night with the vice armory officer. Number three, we at least made a single Nagamaki. We call it the Dayatatara Nagamasa. The inspector was in high spirits and he and the vice armory officer. Nozuma was so taken by the beauty of the Daitara Nagamasa that he drew a picture of it. He performed a sword dance with that wandering eccentric. Number four, and we could not find that eccentric. The inspector flew into a rage and slashed Katsuragi. The great blade cut deep into the flesh, cast his own Nagamaki into the furnace's flame. Nozumo could not abide by that order and drew the completely melted weapon out of the furnace. He was horribly burned. Motherfucker, you put your hand in a fucking furnace. You're going to be worse than burn. It's, it's literally like molten fucking lava, dude. Nozuma died that night. Oh. <laughs> Well, I, I don't say I didn't fucking tell you so. I dare say that while Sir Katsuragi might have committed malfeasance, it was out of the goodness of his heart. Number six, Kinjoru hid the Nagamaki and Nozumo's drawing in the arsenal. Nagamasa is harsh, but also knows right from wrong. But even so, he's not amenable to reason. His name indicates one obsessed with purity, still. I and some house households of Tatarasuna have not uh, been blinded by the matter of Nagamasa's mother, Chio. And we trust him. Wait, Chio? Chat, remind me, I recognize that name, like, instantly. The Odi friend, oh yes! In the artwork, right? With, uh, with, with Makoto, Raiden, her, and, uh, and Yai is the fox. Oh, fuck yeah, I remembered that, okay. Pog, good to remember. I also remain unwilling to forget the joy of creating the Daitara Nagamasa with him, and that joy of watching that nameless eccentric perform that sword dance with Katsuragi. Before we withdrew, we should have divided the arsenal key into three parts, one for the inspector, one for the armory officer, and one to be left in Tatarasuna itself to prevent theft. But we were in too much of a hurry, and neither the inspector nor the armory officer could be found, so I was so bold as to hide the three pieces within treasure chests in Tatarasuna. They should have got whoever wrote this to build the wall in Sumeru, dude, because holy fucking shit. Balls. Okay, the seven notes mentioned prior have been scattered across the Tataras unit area. Among the seven notes, six seem to be of good physical integrity, though they all look quite old, while the last one looks more recent. I believe that the first six notes and the last are of different time periods. Though the gulf in years between them needs to be verified, the contents of the first six should also be related to each other, as the incidents mentioned are quite consistent with one another. Rumi once mentioned in Happily Hidden Tales of Tadarazuna, here after known as Hidden Tales, that in the past, researchers from Sumeru had investigated the cultural histories of Tadarazuna and Inazuma. Though the place had fallen into some degree of... Uh, disrepair since the Hidden Tales were written. Things have improved since the time when I wrote my original article. Regardless, what used to be an area of major industry remains a place most un inhospitable, and residents of Tatarazuna may be found living and dwelling by the waters. The residents, when questioned, told the researchers of Tatarazuna's golden age centuries ago, when it was administered by Armory Officer Niwa, Vice Armory Officer Miyazaki, and Inspector Mikoshi Nagamasa. Yet the elders among the locals with deeper ties to the region also seem to to stress that the fact that there were strange rumors surrounding their homeland's past. A great many of these rumors resolving around the yukai, the yokai, uh, who are very, very characteristic of Inazuma's folk histories, 
A small portion, however, repeatedly mentioned the word puppet. It should be known that puppets are neither traditional nor common yokai in Inazuma. This fact drew the attention of the researchers to delve further, and eventually, the following pieces of information came to light. A puppet did once appear in Tatara sooner. Its visage was elegant, its apparel impeccable, and the way it dressed had all the joint lines on its body. If no one would have mentioned that it was indeed a puppet, it would be hard to tell at all. Additionally, this puppet seemed to possess special joint lines that would fade with time, potentially even disappearing altogether, which would perhaps eventually make the puppet seem entirely human. The name of the puppet was known to almost none. Some folk claimed to have spotted it appearing around Tatara sooner, while others mentioned encountering it in the central regions of the area. Some even claimed that it would frequent the beach. Tales spread of it standing beside the sea and gazing across the waters towards Inazuma City. What it was that the puppet was gazing at remains a mystery. As mentioned earlier, the six notes all document a certain nameless eccentric. The eccentric, which can also be read as Kabuki Mono, is usually used in Inazuma to refer to a figure who dresses or behaves in a peculiar manner. It is understandable, therefore, why this character would have left such an impression. Should the people of Tatara Suna indeed have a puppet in their midst incurring mass panic? A good possibility considering the coexistence between yukai and humans in Inazuma at large, then the puppet would have very likely become a local resident. What is less well known is if the Kabukimono was just another title for this puppet. Perhaps it was so uniquely dressed to distract attention from its more special characteristics. A workable theory but one that still lacks enough evidence to support it. Still, it can be retained as an analytical lens of sorts. A list of individuals related to Tatara Zuna has been compiled here based on historical documents from Inazuma. Starting from the administrators, the records are as follows. Holy fucking shit, dude. Yo, chat, some of y'all best appreciate me reading all this, I swear to God. <laughs> Armory Officer Niwa. Full name, Niwa Hishisahide. He was the inheritor of the Ishin art and successor to the Niwa clan. His family, along with the Akami, the, the Akami and Kadahara clans, were together known as the Ishin Sansaku. Records show that Niwa was a modest and intelligent individual who displayed remarkable talent in the administration of territory and people. His eventual whereabouts are unknown, but he was suspected to have left Atara Zuna with his family following the incident. Vice of Armory Officer Miyazaki. Full name Miyazaki Kaneo. He was Niwa's second in command. His origins are unknown, and he primarily assisted Niwa in forging and, per uh, and personnel management. He was off affable. Temp he was of affable temp temperament and had many friends in the region, including one Mikoshi Nagamasa. The successor of the Mikoshi clan adopted son to Oni warrior Mikoshi Chio, and the younger adopted brother to Mikoshi Machi Ma 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 Machihiro, also known as. Iwakura the successor. With his mother missing and abandoned by his brother, Nagamasa alone bore the family name, striving daily to wipe the shame from their history. The records state that Mikoshi Nagamasa was a stubborn figure. He was also noted to be a person of moral virtue and integrity. It has been noted in various records that he practiced forging swords for self-cultivation and specially requested special instruction from Miyazaki to further his capabilities. However, after the famous blade Daitara Nagamasa was forged, he used it to slay his subordinate Katsuragi for reasons unknown at present. Katsuragi's full name and background remain unknown. Despite all the materials I have sorted through, I have yet to find any more additional personal information regarding him. As one of Mikoshi Nagamasa's subordinates, he was a loyal warrior who had been saved by Nagamasa in his youth. From then on, he swore to stick by his lord through thick and thin and to give his life in service if it was but asked of him. Kabuki Mono, finally! Okay, here we go! God damn! Full name unknown, background unknown. From many sources I have compiled, combined with Rumi's personal observations, this character might have been the puppet mentioned in the rumors. The Kabuki Mono was a figure of fashionable grace and gentleness according to the hidden tales. He was brought back to Tatara Zuda by Katsuragi and became a member of the community. When the Kabuki Mono first arrived in Tatara Zuda, he knew nothing of cleaning cooking or any work of meticulous nature the locals taught him their skills over time showing him how to clean his attire dance and craft small trinkets records state that the kabuki moto was there when the daitara nagamasa was forged though his trail ends before mikoshi nagamasa slew katsuragi i believe that the kabuki moto was indeed the aforementioned puppet and that he quite literally or quite likely had a hand in the death seems that the rest of this paper remains unfinished one thing is for sure though a lot of thought was put into it. Yeah, you don't fucking say, dude. Now listen, that was all very fucking interesting. Paimon, if you fucking give a recap of this shit, I'm punting you to Celestia.
Sawada so was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but we I think it. essays should be grounded in facts. True. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. It's basically what oh, happened, though. How about if I plug the holes in Sawada's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. Wait, uh, why not just make yeah. that from SA to guess a there good one holy shit hopefully that was i i have a feeling that was a uh uh impromptu line that's a good fucking line yeah sounds more like a novel has this guy ever written an essay before Akaba, look your teacher has researched this extensively i've reached out to everyone i could think of whatever information we have now is all that there is to know this is as much detail as you're ever going to get Mm. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Good point. Uh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Uh, give me some time. I, I need to find a new angle on this. Yeah, I'll leave you to it. We have some other stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay. All right, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. Whoa, Paimon didn't summarize and had a funny line? Holy shit. Hey, so that thing they were talking about, oh, no. it has to do with the balladeer, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, then even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? Uh, all, probably not. He kicked his butt and got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? A hundred percent it is. If you ask Paimon, Akaba should just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in... Oh. Uh... <gasps> oh, God, I'm so nervous, dude. Please, please do this character justice. What's wrong? Hey. It's Scar. The Balladeer! No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see. I'm excited, dude. I, I've i never felt this way about a character before, chat. I have never felt nervous and, like, super nervous and super excited about a character before. This is this is a, a very interesting feeling. Oh, it was fucking Nahida, dude. <laughs> Wait, no, he's there. Oh, they're both here. Traveler, Paimon, there you are. Mm. Hi. Oh, yeah. Bad news. We just saw the balladeer strolling around in public. I think she knows he's right there. Yeah, it's him! Yeah, he's right there, Jesus. Hmm. Sure enough, you're here. Well done! Hey! What are you doing in the sanctuary of Suristana? Aren't you supposed to be locked up? You little shit. I know you must have a lot of questions. Please, allow me to explain. Okay. It was my idea to set the balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's gonna do some investigation in Ermansoul for me. A deal? <laughs> <laughs> you sure you trust this guy? Mm. What did you expect? Why do you think Sumero would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. You can but talk. If that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Motherfucker talks like this as if every single encounter we've had with him hasn't been him threatening to kill us. Hello, dude? Don't flatter yourself. It was... Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. No, I hate feet. Mm, well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? Just for you, but Nahida. I'm worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. You literally did the same thing when you tried to kill her! Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Fucking gaslight girl Even boss gatekeep, Ned. 
Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you, considering you even struck a deal with the doctor. Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. Mm. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. True. The Paladir's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. I think the Fatui have already forgotten about him. <laughs> Wait a second. Former? You mean, he's not a Harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but... It seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... Ooh. Oh, now I had a choice of words, but, but, yeah. Fucking loser, I guess. Oh god, so we toss you out like trash. Sometimes it's you using them, other times it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Mm. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui. And also between each of the Harbingers. Oh, interesting. So okay. as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. Really? What a crying shame. Oh, did. <laughs> I'm loving this so far, by the way. Listen. I love Scaramouche as a character. I think his character is fucking phenomenal. I think the shit that he's done is terrible but obviously the impact that it's had on people it adds to the world so much he's such a good piece of shit patrick does a fucking phenomenal voice voice in him by the way probably one of my favorite characters in terms of like the the, the voice matching the personality and stuff but i now love that we're treating him as he's been portrayed for the past god knows how many months instead of being like oh my god i'm so scared of him now we're like oh what a crying shame he's helpless now <laughs> Well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we okay. discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings, and you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear. Yes. Don't you? Mm -hmm. And they're your friends. So I guess you'll be siding with them. Mm. Yeah, obviously! Nahira, don't listen to him! Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Fair. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. All right. Then I'll do what we agreed. Good. Go now and keep in touch. What did you agree? Nihira, are you... Are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact... I'm largely doing it for your benefit. Oh, that's interesting. For... for me? Yes. As I told you once before, oh. there's information about your twin in Ermansoul. True, I didn't even oh, think about that. yeah. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. Yes. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Ermansoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount wow. of information in Ermansoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. That's interesting. So even without the Gnosis, some traces of its power still reside in him? I wonder if it works the same with Archons. That's really interesting. I wonder how long the, the residual power actually remains. That's that's very interesting. I've... I, I didn't expect that, to be honest. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermansoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information, and should be able to find it more quickly. Archons keep power without Gnosis, without vision. They keep power, yes, but the, the power that they get from the Gnosis is obviously amplified. I'm curious if that when they lose the Gnosis, they actually become, like, on a power scale, 
quote unquote weaker or if a lot of that power remains for a while then it just goes away you just never really know you know what if he lies to you exactly or what if you Paimon just doesn't trust him he's treated us as enemies every time we run into him i understand but sometimes everything is dictated by which side you're on oh. how things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back and traveler I know what your heart desires most of all. Uh. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark. Searching for the one candle whose light still burns. Oh, shit. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. God damn. If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. Thank you, Nahida. Yeah. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Best arc on 100%. For I'm sure. I'm still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. It seems like we have a telepathic connection. True. <laughs> In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. <sighs> Of yeah. course, I'll be there to help guide you through Ermin Soul from the outside. Got it. Glad to be able to help. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Ermin Soul. What, like right now? Can I go pee first? Wait, wow. but. Wow. It looks pretty different here compared to last time. I just the pissed myself. Are gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Wait. Yeah, there's no more cubes. That, that can't be as simple as because Sumeru is at peace now. Oh, that's fucking interesting, dude. The sky color and the fact that there's no cubes anymore? That's weird. I know we removed the pollution, but the cubes? I need explanations on the cubes. <laughs> uh, That's really interesting. God, this place is fucking stunning, dude. Go. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Nah, he just sent me to babysit you, bitch. Shut your beak, jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! Mm -hmm. I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards. But right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Or maybe we fucking shouldn't, you little bitch. <laughs> Sounds like a successful rendezvous. Shut up, I Nahida. must be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Oh god. Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. Oh, no. I know there are many grievances between you on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. <sighs> understood. Reluctantly, but understood. Fine. Let's call it truce. But only until this mission's over. Agreed. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are going to be traveling together after all. Per my agreement yes, we with are. Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. Also, don't call our eyes pretty. You're not going to go from evil fucking supervillain to one of the harem that easily, motherfucker. If there are no further objections, I suggest we get going. Or did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? Yes, I did, actually. <laughs> I'm worried. Snark on this guy. It's unbearable. 
trouble. There's no need for all the biting sarcasm. Focus on doing your job. We can start now. Ermin Soul access grant. Initiating connection procedure. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Is God. Is this a small sapling? Oh. oh darn it! Come on, let's catch up with him. Okay, he just disappeared, dude. Okay, easy. We're heading in. Wow. Jesus, it's. So this is the inside of Ermansoul. It's different from what I imagined. Okay, I, I did. I can't wait to see this tree in the actual game. Ooh. Hyman's never seen anything like this. Oh, look at the star shapes. And it feels like a sacred place. Ermin's soul is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Wow. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. Every bit of information you say. Oh, 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 I got one. It says you're a bitch. Why is it that Paimon just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <laughs> Same. <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Ermin's soul. Can you still sense where the heart of Ermin's soul is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? Permission granted. Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. Stay close. Don't go running off. Hey, so... Say we did go running off in here. What would happen? <laughs> hmm. What, what are you smirking at? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is to stick close to me. Ooh. Ooh, okay. How about fuck you? And I go this way. Fuck! Okay, never mind. It don't let me, dude. I have to stay close to you, kind of. Damn, I can't even walk. Okay. These sapling things have spread out. A fragment? The... Those are all packets of information from inside Ermin's soul. Be careful not to touch them. Sorry, let me just fucking focus my speed read demon. Holy shit, dude. The location changed. Look. make it the black text. You know the black background with the white text? Just make it skippable. Just make it so you have to click, please. It looks the same in every direction. It does. It's weird. Oh, God. This is so weird, dude. Dude, that fucking... Oh, it looks so cool. It really does look cool. Oh, my God. Continue exploring. No he mentioned about getting lost. Huh. What do you know? He was actually telling the truth. Yeah. Huh. Is he <laughs> me again? Oh, what is it this time? There's a time and a place to lie, but this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? I just noticed the thing on the, the back of his, uh, the, the, the weird hair, head veil thing looks like the sundial or the ult. Pretty pog. Never noticed that. We're here. Hello. What a huge tree! This is the center of Erminsol. All the information in the world is flowing through it. Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. Are you ready? Ready when you are. Oh, God. Then please begin. Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The Balladeer is actually doing what Nahida tells him. Guess he must want to stay alive. He hasn't put up any resistance and he seems good at working on the front line. Maybe he had a similar role in the Fatui. First Akaba and Sawada's stories, now this. What a strange individual. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. Hmm. Oh god. Huh. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Traveler, Paimon, would you like to talk? Yeah. Nahida, is this a telepathic conversation? Yes. I've also invited Paimon to join. Huh? What the? We can talk to each other inside our heads? God, this is so weird. <laughs> I'm guessing that you don't want us to disturb the Balladeer. <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. Paimon's never tried this before. This is great! It is pretty cool. So, Paimon's been wanting to ask you something. Don't you 
think the Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction? He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. Yes, and he seems to excel at doing odd jobs for others. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. Is it about his past, the betrayals, and the other events in Inazuma? Well done. Smart and attentive as always. Actually, I caught a glimpse of a few things when I ran into Herpesia at Pardis Dia. You relate what you saw in the Baladia's mind. Oh, yeah. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Well, it's true. Betrayal turned the Baladia into the person he is today. Yeah. I'm a that nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. 100%. Everyone has a history, Paimon. Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on, yes. I know about all of that. Okay. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. You tell Nahida about the story Akaba and Sawada are writing. Oh? How interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. So the guessy got it right? <laughs> <laughs> no shot, well, did. They guessed right about one thing. Tatara Suna was sabotaged. There it is. Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. Hey! Ah, get out of my head! Uh, what makes you think we're talking to each other? <laughs> Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. We have every right to keep certain things a confidential, Mr. Moosh. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermansoul at all. Interesting. Hey, how did you know about that? Didn't Ahita tell you? It's not like we've never met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. <laughs> These voice lines are felt, dude. Every conversation with you is hard work, but your attitude's better than I thought. Yeah, it's, 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 it's weird. It, 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 this feels wrong. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Mm. Huh? Wait. Oh? This light. It looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Oh. Hey, don't you forget the agreement. You have to share it with us. Shh. Just wait. Anonymous. Mr. Niwa, are you certain this is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara Suna's furnace, after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the furnace. It has to be me. Is that so? <sighs> well, since you insist. <gasps> that second it's... voice sounded familiar. That name, Niwa was the... Uh... The man in charge at Tatara Zuna, plus he belongs to the lineage of Ishin art. Whoa! Oh. Oh. Are we going... It. I have been in Tatara Suna for some time now. You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Under your leadership, Tatara Suna is a warm, welcoming place. Like a giant village. 
People are gainfully employed. Their lives have purpose. They are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatara Suna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. They hella npc ified him, but at least he's recognizable. The forging industry with Crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, <laughs> others unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. Remember him. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Chat, do we know who voices Niwa? This voice sounds, like, hectically familiar, if that makes any sense. Clifford Chapit. What else have they voiced? Sounds like. Oh, so it's not definitely them? Interesting, okay. Even now, you remain one of Tatara Suna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. Hmm. <laughs> you flatter me. From the outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma. And it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So you say, Escher. But is this really the truth? Escher. My good sir, what do you mean? You sound sus as fuck. I tried to resist thinking it was all connected. Because I didn't want to speculate. And I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke, mounting production problems, worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. Mm. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still, I suspect you understand it better than I do. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with Shogun. This is our last hope. But that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? <sighs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. <sighs> Interesting. Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. That is why he sounded familiar. Assassination classroom. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Sorry, there we go. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio. The yokai struck down by the shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Hmm. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? <laughs> Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. Jesus. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. I'm in charge here. And I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside. Probably to my death. Oh. What about you? Fuck it, hell. What are you still doing here? Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. Bro. Drop the act. We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatara Suna has worked. 
when you fucking talk like that, there is absolutely no shot anybody is gonna trust you, dude. I don't sound suspicious in the slightest. <laughs> I'm going to bake you a cake and you should eat it all up. <laughs> Happy birthday. Gee, it, motherfucker sounds like Lord Voldemort, dude. There's no shot. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? Don't you have all your answers by now? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. Oh! Bitch! A moment like this, where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. Why? You... You... Oh, fuck. I got sliced and diced. You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. Wait, the I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well, at least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. Is this who I fucking think it is? Wait, this isn't Escher at all, dude. Is this fucking, is this a, a fucking segment? It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias. And that I was not from Fontaine at Dude, the, all. The voice switch up. And yet, despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity and what I seek in Tatarasuna. Did you really think you would be able to see oh, through my plan? Shit! <sighs> that voice light happens. If you kill me. There's no one who can get inside the furnace. So you're really going to destroy this place, bro? Is that it? Bro, this motherfucker switched up voice literally three times. As, so as soon as he said disguised himself, I was like, okay, well, it's fucking not Nahida. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I did let's bet that. I did not see that coming. That's really fucking interesting. So, Datore also knows about Tatara Asuna stuff, which means he... Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck, dude. Which means he potentially knows as well as Skara does about the false... <sighs> Oh, okay. Okay, that's really interesting. This is very interesting. Holy shit. Oh, but you're quite wrong. There is one other person. Um, some may not see him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. Jesus. You're just missing a heart. <laughs> oh, God. Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But this makes no sense. <sighs> what are you really trying to accomplish by all this? Why go to all this trouble? It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. Wow. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. In blasphemy? If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. I'm a Fatui Harbinger. Call me Call the me Doctor. The Doctor. God, I love him, dude. Fatui? Who? What do you want? Just to create a minor inconvenience for your nation. That's it? Jesus. That's why you gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the Crystal Marrow? Oh, God. <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. What? It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. Okay, chat, you know the Tore's VA? Was he also voicing Asha? As in, like, the, the... Fuck, dude. This is so <laughs> interesting. <laughs> because the thing is, it sounded like after the switch... Okay, so it sounded like the voice switched up twice. It sounded like the original voice sounded like it was great on, on me. I was like, that sounds like someone. But then before he switched to the Tore voice, he also switched up and started sounding a bit more fucking British. But not Esh... Dude, that was that was so well done. God, that was so fucking well done. Holy shit. That was it really well done. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. 
I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, oh, even without you, that pure, innocent puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> if you give him my heart, tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. His heart he has nothing to prove to anyone because not everyone just wants to use other people the only ones who think like that Jesus. are people like you god damn dude what a beautiful Don't. way to see the world it almost makes me feel a little guilty hmm then out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. Jesus Christ, I say, dude. Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa. Already dead. Fucking hell. What a pity. <sighs> That's dark as Jester, shit, Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> what fun it was. I'm angry for a couple of different reasons. This is the fucking frame that we saw, and if it had just been a little bit more zoomed in, we would have seen him on the ground. Interesting. That's a really good use of camera work. Um, I don't think we're going to get to see the Jesser now, which makes me sad. And I'm semi-pissed about another thing, which I'm not even going to fucking mention right now. I'd like to <laughs> introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not... Let's turn him to dust. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. You seeing now? You realizing? Understanding? Hey, are you all right? Wait, did we not see that? I assume we also saw that. Not, or maybe that was just him that saw that. Detore. Oh, God. <laughs> Detore. You fucking psychopath. Why are you laughing? Oh, maybe that was maybe that was scared laughing? <laughs> Sad laughing? Are you okay? Good. Good. Was that the doctor? Did he turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? I'm afraid so. He was the one behind the Tatara Suna incident. God, that makes me wonder, dude. Who else has he managed to like turn into? Oh my god. If you can take the form of literal other people so well? Crack theory. What if he was the senora that went the innocent? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, he was over behind the Tatarasuna incident. But why do we see things from his perspective? When I touched the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments, I read this memory in his mind. Hmm. You have to admit, it must be the truth. Maybe so, but it means nothing. Mm. Does it? But this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you. He never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace. You know very well what that means. Even more so than I. Hmm. Uh, this betrayal was a lie that is... Uh, that he has believed for hundreds of years. Was this part of the doctor's experiment? Wait, that's a good point. I actually forgot that I guess that kind of gives us a rough... Wait, how old would Datori be in this case? When was the Tatara Suna stuff? That means at least one of the clone... The clones? The segments is... Yeah, 400? 
So then the OG Datori is easily over for- Wow. Oh, fuck. Okay, that's... That's very interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. If the betrayal never happened, it existed only in his imagination, but where does this leave him? Let's give him some space. Don't say things like that. He looks really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. Okay, let's go over there. Yeah, there's not really anywhere to go. We need to give him some time to process his emotions. Paimon's still confused about the Tatarasuna incident. So, the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Mm. Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. As far as she knows. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. Actually, that's so false. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as a mechanic from Fontaine. And that's when the trouble began. Hmm. That's false. Paimon has been betrayed like that before, when Kaya told her there was a really powerful treasure and it turned out to be the fucking three-star sword. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. Of all mm. the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Mewa's heart into the device and handed it to the balladeer. Then, he instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. I mean, this is gross as fuck, but is, are we saying that, that Scaramouche has a Kaidahara heart? The load was far beyond what he expected, but the balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Mewa fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. Jesus. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The Don't put it in. Stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing, but it has protected him from the filth. He thought Miwa had completely betrayed him, and yet this very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the balladeer threw the heart to the ground and left to Tarasuna without looking back. Holy moly. So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible. Hmm. Being betrayed and abandoned by a close friend is sure to cause great resentment. Now we know what was behind his decision to take revenge on the Raiden Gokadan a hundred years ago. But it doesn't mean that vengeance was the right decision. True, it doesn't. Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. God. Datori, you brazen face. <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him. Wow. That is, uh. That is interesting. That. Wait, I was gonna move a while later. Wait, no, I, I wanted to walk up to him. Shall we see how he's doing? It forced me. Why? Hey, you alright? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a scary expression. Yeah, don't smile like that. Don't Are smile. you worried about me? If we didn't have such a history, I'd almost think that qualifies me to be your friend. It doesn't, by the way, in the slightest. Uh, we just want to make sure this doesn't affect the plan. It won't. I'll keep my end of the deal. Okay. Hmm. Hey, are you investigating the stuff we want to know about? That's why we're here. True. Oh, but unfortunately, there's no information about the Descenders in Ermansoul. Even if you can't find anything, that seems to confirm it. Ermansoul does not keep records on the Descenders. Anyone who comes from beyond this world is not counted as part of Tevat. Oh, does that mean we have to leave empty-handed? Interesting. 
Not unexpected, but still, thank you. Don't thank me just yet. Hmm, you look really upset. <laughs> well, since Ermin's soul was a dead end, I guess I can share some other info that might interest you. Oh? Huh? About what? The reason why there are records about your sister and Ermin's soul. It might have something to do with Conria. Apparently, Conria was her first destination when she arrived in this world. Oh, shit. Plus, she only came to this world because the heavens responded to the summoning. Huh? Wait. Dude, this is making it sound like the like my fucking crack theory about the fucking Lord of the Rings shit is true. The heavens responded? The jester told me this himself. You can take his word on this. He was a royal mage in Conria and lived with your sister for a time. What? Jester? A catalyst user? Wait, <laughs> I'm kidding, but what the fuck? <laughs> I really thought he'd be Claymore, dude. Wow, that's a fucking law bomb and a half. The Jester, another Vidui Harbinger. Why? I don't know the details. It's up to you whether you want to believe me. All I can say is, I wouldn't lie to you about this. Did you get all that, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Mm. Yes. Astonishing news. Does this info count towards my mission? It wasn't for Merman's soul, but was it valuable? It was valuable. Very valuable. Good. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Okay, that's where that line is. Interesting. Huh? huh? What have you done? What the hell is this? Would you believe Ashika has a theory on this before it came out? Interesting. I'm assuming he's blocked communication off so that whatever happens in the bubble stays in the bubble. Lesser Lord Kusanali was right. My power's all but completely spent. Even if I use all of the divine power left in me, I can't sustain this shield for very long. I shared a secret with you, and now you owe me. So in return, I'd like you to answer a question for me. Maybe if I just leave this screen on for long enough, then your fucking bubble will run out. How about that? Hmm? Hmm? What do you want to know? Give me your hand. No! Uh, Pime on you first. Why do you look so sad? Why do I look so sad and, and shocked? Uh, what, what's happening? Can you hear my voice inside your head? Yes, but I wish I couldn't. Are you trying to brainwash me? No, I can't do anything like that anymore. Any? At most, all I can do is exchange a few words with you. So tell me, in this world, is it possible? to change the past. No. No, 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 no. If this fucking ends with this motherfucker wiping the the old him from the Ermintal, whether it's from him or from everybody else that doesn't concern us, I'm going to be so pissed, dude. And please, just fucking lie. It, it's 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 just going to undo so much potential bullshit, dude. <sighs> Why would you ask that? Done. Huh? What? What the what happened? I not only saw you hold hands for a second. Nothing. I was just thanking him for helping me. Did he see me hesitate? But that was because I know about Greater Lord Ruka Devata. By not denying so it immediately. So long. I suggest you get yourselves out of here quickly. That skipped for literally no reason. The text hadn't even finished yet. The fuck? Where are you going? Bugged dialogue. Hey, Baladia, stop! Paimon, we have to stop him! Hmm. Fast reaction time. But I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. Oh god, what? From this day forth, the names Baladir and Kabukimono will cease to exist. Those who died in Tatarasuna because of me deserve another chance at life. Hey! Baladir! Don't do anything stupid! You know, I never did like insects. Hordes of the puny things swarming together can be a real nuisance. And I enjoy nothing more than to stamp them out like the pests they are. But if a colony of harmless ants isn't threatening anyone, I guess they deserve to be left alone. Luckily, everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for that all. That isn't setting anything Bad right. Uh-oh, he disappeared. Come on, we gotta find him somehow. It's literally not setting anything right uh, at all. I really hope we talk sense into him. I genuinely do. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's really gone. What was that? Oh, can you hear me? 
Yes. Nihira! Traveler, Paimon, Paladir, what happened just now? I was suddenly cut off by some kind of power. It was the Paladir's fault. He... he shut you out! You thought Nahira everything that happened? Oh god, dude. I didn't think he'd be capable of something like that with so little power left. Yup. Did he keep some of his power hidden when he was defeated? Or... Did he achieve something beyond his abilities? And it took everything he had. Where the heck did he go? He's got his side. It's all our fault. We were supposed to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Nahida. Scar yeah, he unmodded. Is Scara's giving hella Discord mod energy right now, dude. Don't be. It's not your fault. Please, let me handle this from here. Even though I'm not sure I can solve it. We're running out of time. Follow my lead and get out of Ermansoul as soon as possible. Sorry, mods. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Mm -mm -mm. That just said when an opponent is a reach too far away, they may not produce any drops. What? Interesting. We're out. And we're at... Uh, an inn or something? This is an emergency. I'll have to ask you to stay here for now. Mm. Everything's arranged and nobody will disturb you. No, I want to help you. Is there anything we can do? I'm sorry, but this isn't something I need your help with. Leave this one to me. An emergency? How bad is it? Nahida, will you be okay? Don't worry. If my assessment is correct, though there may be some minor disturbances, it won't lead to a disaster. Please rest and recover your strength here until I say it's safe. Chat, stop asking for a beep. We're not in a fucking samsara, okay? And if we are, I quit. Her voice has gone. Paimon can't shake the feeling that something really big has happened. What do you think the Balladeer meant? And why did he suddenly grab onto you before? Paimon doesn't remember Greater Lord Ruka Devata, and the Balladeer's question was a strange one. It's hard to explain in full, and truth be, it might be very distressing for Paimon. I'll skip the part about Greater Lord Ruka Devata for now and focus on the Balladeer. You tell Paimon what the Balladeer asked you and what, might, what he might have been planning. He wants to change the past? But... Surely that's impossible. It's not easy, that's for sure, bro. Oh, God. Okay, listen, hear me out here, chat. Hear me out. I'm going to give my full unfiltered thoughts right now, okay? And I'm going to do it in the midst of the samsara. Okay, chat, hear me out. I'm going to give you my full unfiltered thoughts right now, okay? And I'm going to do it during the samsara. Okay, chat, here, listen me out. <laughs> I'm kidding, but, okay, yeah, I know, I fucked it up at the end. I am going to give you my full unfiltered thoughts because I need to. That was funny, though, you got to admit, that was five head, giga chand. There's, like, in, in my eyes right now that I can see, there's four possible outcomes. He comes out of this where everybody, including himself, remembers everything, and he's still a salty bitch, and we love him, including me. I will love him because I don't want him to get redeemed, and I don't want anyone to forget about all the bad shit he's done because it's just a big cop-out, in my opinion. Number two, he erases what he's done from his own mind, which from the part that previously just happened wouldn't really make too much sense anymore because he's wanting to right the wrongs and doing that would only make him forget. It'd be kind of fucking pointless and ridiculous. Number three... Uh, he wipes everybody else's mind, which was a very popular theory that Asta had and that I mentioned as well, because it's the one that I was I was thinking could happen if he didn't wipe himself. But if he did that, it's not really fixing anything. It's just making people forget that it's him that did it, which is really fucking dumb in my opinion. And I p potentially could be even worse than him wiping his own memory, depending on how it had been done. And number four, wait, which ones did I already say? Wiping it from everything, which would be kind of fucked and wouldn't make much sense. But I really hope that th them introducing this whole stuff with Ruka Devata doesn't mean that they're going to be doing it for other characters as well. Just don't make it feel like a cop-out. Don't do it. It's, 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 let's just fucking bring him out of this, give him a fucking talking to and be like, yo, you know what? It's okay. People can change and be apologetic and make things right by not just making people fucking forget. It's not easy and that's for sure. Right. You can't just rewrite history. All that stuff happened already in real life. It has. But, it's like Ruka... Imagine Paimon drank all the water in this inn. Even if no one was there to see it, Paimon would sure as heck remember drinking it. Great example. Hmm. So, why does Paimon still have a bad feeling about this? Paimon can't help but feel...
feel scared about what he might do. Ooh, Paimon's so confused. I think we could talk him out of it. Maybe he wants to erase himself from history. Huh? What the fuck? Okay, are you okay? Sorry, Paimon accidentally. Ugh. That's fucking sus. That's fucking sus. We've never seen Paimon get that weird. I have a feeling she's been erased from history. Or something like that. Maybe she actually is a fucking Aranara if I would Not Aranara if I do you know what I mean. She did something similar in the chasm, but she, she's never been that bad. As to like knocking something over. You trust her? Oh, I couldn't trust her as far as I could fucking throw her, and I think I could throw her pretty fucking far. But I don't think she knows. That's the thing. I I, I think it's like an R&R &R thing where the memory gets wiped after something. There's something definitely not right with Paimon. Uh, what it is, no one knows, I assume. But erasing yourself from history? It's unthinkable. Is that really possible in Ermansoul? Not necessarily, but maybe. I'm just guessing here. And it's still not working. Paimon's had it with that little brat. He's been nothing but trouble ever since we met him. There's no way he'll actually succeed, right? Otherwise, won't everyone who's connected to him be affected too? That's that's the biggest worry. Indeed, if the Baladia does erase himself from Erminsul, many people in Inazuma will be affected. I can't imagine what that situation would look like. It'd be miserable. Worst case scenario, it'll affect everyone with a connection to the Raiden, Gokuden, Kazuha, Ayaka, Ayato. Will this mean that they'll disappear? What? Okay, I don't understand how the fuck you get to that conclusion. Why the fuck would they disappear? But, I don't There's know. There's nothing we can do about it at this point. Hey, have you got any ideas on what we should do next? Butterfly effect? No, chat, I understand that, but it's not like he fucking gave birth to them. Like, I think most of them would still be in the positions that they are in without him even existing. This is really fucking weird, dude. This is really weird. Seems like now there's nothing left for us to do but to go to sleep. But Paimon's still so worried. Paimon won't be able to sleep a wink tonight. Me neither. So, how about, uh, we <laughs> list all our favorite foods to take our mind off things? Heck, if that doesn't work, Paimon's probably going to collapse of anxiety here. <laughs> All right, Paimon will start. First dish. Hmm. Munstack grilled fish. Oh, and chicken mushroom skewers. Tea break pancakes. Cream stew. Jeez. Sauteed matsutake. I am going to sleep at this point. If you killed someone who could have potentially been a partner to someone else and then unkill them, butterfly effect. Yeah, but that's it, literally impossible to happen. We're not bringing anyone back to life. We're, we're destroying data. It's not like it's fucking time travel where we're going back in time and, and, and making sure that the people that he killed don't die or anything. We haven't seen any case of that, like, at all in the game yet. And and chili chicken, almond tofu, satisfying salad? Satisfying oh, sleep. Oh, also, Adeptus Temptation, Golden Shrimp Balls, Triple Layered Consomme, Lotus Seed and Bird Egg Soup, and... and... Beg. Um... Oh, no. No. Uh, no. Hmm? No. Uh, hmm. Not again. I was fucking joking. It's always a fucking samsara, dude. This better not be a samsara. Uh, what are we... What was Paimon supposed to be doing just now? Paimon was, um, talking? Huh. Paimon certainly can't remember what she was talking about. What was it again? You were getting so worried about the situation with the Baladia that you started listing foods. The Balladeer? Is that a food too? No. Huh. Weird name though. No, 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 no fucking show. Um, dude, I'm gonna be so fucking annoyed if this is actually real. No. Paimon doesn't remember the Balladeer. That must mean he actually pulled it off. But how did he have that ability? This doesn't make sense. What's wrong? Your eyes are like saucers. Was it something Paimon said? No, it's nothing. So, the Balladeer. Is that someone's name? Cause it sounds like a nickname or something. 
If this is really happening, I need to know what else has changed. Paimon, come with me. Okay, sure. Where are we going? I want to go back to Inazuma. Huh? Fine by Paimon, but is everything okay? You're acting like this is an emergency. Now's not the time to explain. Let's just get over there first. Um, okay. I'm really hoping this isn't like what's actually happened at this point. I don't want it to be one of those I told you so moments where what I thought would happen actually happens. I want to be wrong about this. Talk to Amanoma Togo. Oh yeah, good, uh, good person to talk to. We made it to Amanoma Smithy. <laughs> ah, it's been a while. Pardon me, I'd like to ask a question if I may. Of course, go ahead. Could you tell me that story one more time? No. Oh. <laughs> Now there's a question I wasn't expecting. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you what I know once more. The once renowned Raiden Gokuden, comprised of five branches. Aminoma, Futsu, Ishin, Hyakume, and Senju. The art of forging practiced by these five clans was first taught to them personally by the almighty Shogun. Over time, the five branches diverged from one another as generations of bladesmiths honed and perfected their craft until they became five distinct traditions. Most of the great swordsmith clans of old have since fallen into decline. And mm. for a long time, only the Amenoma branch kept its heart alive. But fortunately, Kaidahara Kazuha recently returned to Inazuma and took up the mantle of the Ishin art. Now, two clans remain of the original Gokuden Five. If my memory serves me right, you yourself were present when he forged the Ishin blade. Mm. Oh, yeah, we were. Paima remembers that now. Oh, God, dude. We learned a bit about the decline of the Raiden Gokuden then, too. It seems like such a shame. What was the reason behind that decline? <sighs> That, my friends, is a tragic tale indeed. Wait, maybe... In fact, this was not made known to me for most of my life. All these years, I knew of those great clans' demise, but never Please. the cause. <sighs> Only recently, when the question was on my mind, did I ask Kaidehara Kazuha about this. Okay. He told me that, as we are both heirs to a branch of the Raiden Gokunen... <laughs> Spit it out. It was right that I should know the truth. Come on. There is Remember. no harm in telling you, but I must warn you. Okay. <laughs> it is a dark and sorrowful tale. You remember you've already told me once. That's why I said, can you tell me the story again? Just remind me, please. The ride in Gokuden were the targets of a murderous rampage by a vengeful bladesmith. Vengeful? Why? The music, dude. 400 years ago, so I'm told... There was a catastrophic malfunction in Tatarasuna's furnace. One brave swordsmith heard the commotion and chose not to flee, but he rushed to the scene, hoping to prevent a disaster. Tatarasuna was home to a state-of-the-art forging and smelting operation in that day, and overseeing it was the armory officer. His surname was Niwa, though he had family ties to the Kaidehara clan. Mm -hmm. Knowing that they had just one chance to save countless lives, Mr. Niwa and the swordsmith leaped together into the furnace. The furnace quickly stabilized, but <sighs> neither of them made it out. The smith's death, though heroic, dealt a devastating blow to his family's fortunes. His orphan son was left to fend for himself and grew up deeply resentful at the world. In his heart, the whole of Inazuma was culpable in his tragedy. He hated the almighty Shogun for her apparent indifference towards his father's death, and he hated everyone who had done nothing to try and save him. Powerless and destitute, the only legacy he had to pass on to his children was his hatred. Generation after generation bore this grudge, living in utter misery. 
I see so many people shocked that he still dies anyway, when all we know of the Ermine Soul and all that was in our head is that we can literally wipe memories and, and, and wipe data. We cannot change the past. The the only thing that they're gonna that they're gonna forget is the fact that Baladir or, or, or Kudi Kuzishi or whatever name he went by at that point is 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 not gonna be involved in it, which fucking sucks because it, it, it it's just such a fucking cop out, it feels like. I really hope this doesn't finish like this at the end, dude, because it, it just feels so it it feels cheap. It feels wrong. Alas. Please, come on. If only the story could have ended there. But 100 years ago... Yeah, I can't say it before finishing the quest. Family ...reached the end of his wits. He could bear their fate no longer. And yet, he could do nothing to change it. Finally, he made a drastic decision. To take revenge on the ride in Gokuten. In doing so, he sought to vent his pet up anger. And shake the very foundations of Inazuma's forging industry. In his fury, he murdered indiscriminately, killing even bladesmiths from the Hyakume clan, which he belonged to. His goal was absolute, the devastation of all of the Raiden Gokuden. Wow. But when he came to the Kaedehara and Kamisato clans, his killing spree came to an abrupt end. He failed to catch them unawares. They fought back fiercely, and they did not spare his life. That is why the Kaidahara clan and their Ishin art survived that day. I suppose they were the lucky ones under the dire circumstances. The legend of the Raiden Gokudan has changed. Someone else attacked the swordsmiths. Looks like the Baladia did something in Ermensal, but it seems Niwa still died. Yeah. I, I, I don't even think I'd want there to be a way to go back and change the past unless it was done incredibly well because, mm, no, I like... I thought that was obvious. I don't know. Maybe obvious to us, but not ask? them. Strange. Uh, have you seen Kazuha recently? Kazuha? Why, yes. Just yesterday, in fact. We spoke for a while over some tea. He seemed well. Phew, so we still exist, and it's the same Kazuha I know. Things don't seem as bad as I feared last night. That's all. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Don't tell Paimon. There are other places you want to visit too, right? <laughs> Your expression says it all. You can't hide anything from Paimon. On to the next stop. Lead the way, traveler. Paimon will be right behind you. Fucking hell, dude. I'm stressed. We're here. <laughs> I'm stressed. Um, this is the Yashiro Commission's headquarters, so... Traveler, it's been a while. Hello. If you're looking for the commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Hmm. Are they out on business? The commissioner is out on business, and Miss Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? Shall we go in? Mm, we'll take you up on that offer. Can we take a walk in the courtyard? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. I don't like... We'll be heading in then. Mm. Thanks! I, I, dude, I, hmm? anything could be Hello, different here. It's so yes. weird. Is there something you want to say? Mom, can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> of course, traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? How are the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato these days? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the Commissioner's behalf. Jesus, okay, As that... for the commissioner himself, well, you know, busy as ever, that much hasn't changed. Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. I, I understand she's old, but God, she is talking slow. Every single word is slow. Commissioner himself. <laughs> it's like I added an extra syllable, dude. So pretty much business as usual in the Yashiro Commission, huh? 
Very much so. Ayato's still the Yashiro Commissioner. Ayaka is still the Lady of the House. No changes there. As far as I can see, nothing's changed in the Yashiro Commission either. I was expecting as much, but it's a big relief to know that the Kamisato siblings are both safe and well. Well, got any more questions? That's all for now. Many thanks. You're very welcome. In fact, I would very. have nothing more than for you to come and visit more often. Not gonna happen. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Yep. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. Speaking of busy and time. She seems so thrilled <laughs> to have you as a friend. And she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. Oh, that's cute. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So, you're not just Miss Kamisato's knight in shining armor, you know. You're a hero to us all. I'm flattered. Thank you very much. I mean it. Whenever the commissioner dines at home, Toma always joins him. I always find myself at my most relaxed when I'm serving the two of them and listening to them chat away. And I'm sure they feel very relaxed listening to you chat away as well. Listen, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good relationship, you know? The commissioner has Fuck such a home. busy schedule that he doesn't always have the chance to take his meals at home. Speaking of busy schedule... Given oh. the opportunity, he always prefers to dine here. They say must be some good food. Toma's a much better chef than most. <laughs> oh, the commissioner is so fond of home comforts. Hell yeah. They get to talking about you sometimes too, you know. <laughs> always with a very fond tone. The way one would talk about dear old friends around whom one can truly be themselves. Miss Kamisato occasionally joins them as well. Whenever the whole family gets together and they start talking about people they've met and experiences they've had, you always get a mention. It's God, been many years now since the late Mr. and Mrs. Kamisato passed away. Much has happened in the Kamisato clan in that time. Back in my As day. someone who is old and gray enough to have watched their son and daughter grow up, it makes me so happy to see them meet a dependable friend whose company they enjoy so much. So... In the future, if you ever do have the time, please know you are always very welcome at the Yashiro Commission Headquarters. There will always be at least one old lady who would be delighted to have the pleasure of your company. Chill! I'll be back when I get time, which is apparently a lot of it required. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll visit again. The people at Kamisato Club are very dear friends to me. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Haima likes it here, too. Also... You were saying something about the food here being really great. I would literally rather you order a three-course meal, sit and eat it, rather than just ask her about the food, Paimon. I'm not kidding. It'd probably be quicker. Paimon's itching to try it. We may just have to invite ourselves around for dinner sometime. Uh, uh, Paimon meant we should come pay a visit again real soon. Agreed. Ideally around dinner time. Hell yeah. <laughs> of course. You're always welcome. This should be a YouTube short clip? Motherfucker, YouTube short clips have a 59 second time limit. She gets like five words out in 59 seconds. I couldn't fit it in a YouTube short clip. All right, goodbye for now. <laughs> we're, uh, where are we going next? Tatara Suna. Great, goodbye, ma'am. Don't worry, we'll see ourselves out. All right then, take care now. Hope to see you soon. Uh-oh. Did I finish? No. The thing? Are you two leaving already? <laughs> yes. What? Everything's taken care of now. Don't worry. 
Very well. Soon. Safe travels. Goodbye. Goodbye. We won't miss you. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta finish the last that part, dude. <laughs> Oh, okay. We gotta finish the last act of the Tatara Suda one. It is the final one, though, luckily. I'm pretty certain. Back to the awkward quest chat. Let's go. Goodbye, Xavier. Huh? Here we are. But what are we looking for? Xavier gonna get a voice? Or someone? Do my eyes deceive me? Or is that the Traveler and Paimon? Xavier, what are you doing here? Sa I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So what about you two? Xavier? I cannot read that as anything other than Xavier. Is that how it's pronounced in... France? I don't know. Oh, God, I don't know. Okay, it is what it is. Uh, Yeah, is this the Tories VA? Is this the same VA? Because it, it hella fucking sounds like him now, unless it's just from that fucking cutscene, dude. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. We had some questions and thought you might be able to help. Do you know much about Tatarasuna? Certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. Well, how do you understand the history of this area? Or how, uh, yeah, how well? Like the back of my hand? <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. Uh -huh. Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Go on, I'm listening. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story, don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. You talk faster than the old lady, it's fine. Is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A yeah, I helped with one. When exactly? Five minutes ago. <laughs> one was just in the last few years. The other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. They say he was a mechanic who consulted on a technology upgrade. Yeah. It seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations goes back a long way. How oh, about def that? Definitely. Mechanic, huh? Looks like the tutorial still sabotaged uh, the furnace, leading to all that ensuing chaos. I was gonna ask Xavier something about Tatarasuna. Come on, ask already. I am. Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither. Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Pretty much, so can I ask one more question? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Have you ever heard of a kabuki mono connected to Tataras? Hmm. A kabuki mono? Hmm. No, I can't say that I have. I do know the word. Inazuman for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a kabuki mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. So there's no more kabuki mono. Did the Baladia really manage to erase himself from, from history completely? If so, he must have wanted to change the world and revert everything back to the way it was. But so far, it looks like the majority of changes have only affected himself. Thank you, Xavier. Xavier. Of course! Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier! Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. Farewell. Bye. I like him. He has a nice voice. Looks like you got all the information you're looking for. Time to go back and see Lesa Lo Kusanali. Sure, but what's up with you today? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Indigestion, Keep Paimon. Keep your smile, Spinal Crocodile. No matter what happens, Paimon will always be there for you. Alright, thank you, Paimon. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> oh. Alright, let's head off and go meet Nahida. Dude, Paimon's been great this quest. God damn. Oh, I'm waiting for something else that... Mm, there's gotta be more. Hey, it's them. Oh, hey, Akaba. Well, this is awkward. Akaba, <laughs> Sawada, you're still here? Hmm. 
Uh, are you still talking about the essay? Indeed we are. If you have a moment, we'd love for you no. to join us once more. No, no, no. F fuck the essay. Listen. We have time. What do you want to talk to us about? As long as it's talking, that's fine. Yeah, talk to us? The same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. This ain't looking good. This ain't looking good. Still looking for more info about Tatarasuna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Perfect. These two have researched Tarasuda's past. Let's see what they have to say. Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. Can I be... At this point, you just kind of got to fucking trust Ether that things have fucking been wiped. We don't need proof from every single source in the entirety of Tavat. Oh, God. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> oh, fuck off. I've got ready. Oh. Oh, thank God, dude. Oh, thank you for color-coding it. Now do the teleports on the map. A great many of these rumors revolve around the yokai, who is so very characteristic of Dezuma's folk histories. A small portion, however, repeatedly mentions the word outsider. It should be known that the appearance of such a character who is suspected to be based on a real person is a very curious case. This fact drew the attention of the researchers to delve further, and eventually the following pieces of information came to light. A foreign mechanic once visited Tatara Suna. Reportedly, the reason for his immigration was to exchange knowledge and forge ties with the locals. However, the mechanic seemed to behave suspiciously, often wandering around essential or restricted areas, and if someone tried to turn him away, they would only earn an incomprehensible mumble from his lips. The mechanic often stared into the furnace, seemingly to check on its condition. Unsettlingly, he also spent a substantial amount of time watching the local residents. Judging from the, that era, it was not uncommon to see cross-cultural exchanges of technical knowledge in places such as Tatara Suna. After traveling across the tides, foreign experts being welcome after foreign experts being welcome in the region was likely not unreasonable either. Yet calamity came not long after this exchange of knowledge, which hints at high potential for causation between the events. However, some current residents believe that these assumptions were merely the results of their forebears' overactive imaginations attempting to theorize how things actually unfolded. The mechanic. Long have I delved through many texts and documents, but I was ultimately unable to decipher even a specter of a clue as to his background. Still, mentions of the mechanic grew scarcer in the aftermath of the Tatarasuna incident. I speculate that instead of the mechanic possibly being a figure woven from overripe imaginations, he actually did exist and perhaps even had a hand in the events that took place in the Tatarasuna. Interesting. I presume you'll want to read mine as well. God damn it. British man, please don't be as long. Oh, it's longer. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Miyazaki held his grin. Upon hearing this, Niwa released the lizard from his hand into Kataragi's palm. But just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came walking nearby, their footsteps steady and confident. The head that appeared by the door was that of one from abroad. The newcomer placed some lunchboxes to one side, nodded, and made to leave. Katsuragi called out after him. Sir, what about your meal? Are you not hungry? The man smiled upon hearing Katsugari's words. I already ate. I hope that you, my lords, may also find time to sate your hunger soon. You are our guest, sir. To see you help in these trifling matters fills me with embarrassment. Niwa said with sincerity. The man smiled as if it was no matter. Then, with a nod, he departed. Like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat, and it was joined in its bereftness of direction. Like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline. Scant steps away, the mechanic laughed, slowly approaching the grand wreck. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help, and with a plop, it landed on the mechanic's feet, who crouched to better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite. Still so fucking weird, dude. Bran, read like the old lady? No. <laughs> Fine. Yet he did not, for the dark clouds swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean. <laughs> I'm not doing the rest. Okay. Then a second ship was sent, followed by a third and a fourth. Each who left to seek salvation did so under foul skies and bleak fortunes. Reason dictated that they should not have risked anyone else, but the situation in Tatarasuna was severe. They needed to gain aid from Inazuma, even should it cost them more lives. <sighs> the content has changed. Another effect of tampering with the information in Erminsong. The Balladier said he'd erase two of his names. If he really succeeded, it must have taken all of his might, but still. Well, what do you think? It's a masterpiece. Hey, Traveler. Remember how last time Akaba was saying how you wish you could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma, 
So how about we tell them what we learned? Mm, sure. What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Uh, oh, you tell the two writers what you learned about the Raiden Gokuden and Tarasuna's wow. history. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Mm. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Hell yeah. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Hydration time. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. Uh, true, that is fair. And they're back at it. These guys are really into this. We've got some things to take care of. Bye for now. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. See ya. <laughs> Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Okay. Will do. I will try. I'm gonna miss British man. Yeah. Oh god, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Why was I half expected to see fucking Scarra in the prison then like Nahida was in the Archon Quest, dude? Nahida, we're here! <sighs> Traveler, Paimon, how have you been? Ugh, where to start? Paimon hasn't had a moment's rest this whole time. That night, we ended up chatting and chatting until suddenly the sun was up. And then he decided he wanted to go to Inazuma. <laughs> I was investigating the situation with the balladeer. Let's see. I assume Nahida would remember. The balladeer? No. Hmm. This sounds like some kind of cold name. You've got to be fucking kidding me, dude. You look troubled. Is there something you need to tell me? Even Nahida doesn't remember just like last time. Any changes to Ermin's will affect her as well. The Balladier acted quickly. He finished erasing himself before Nahida could stop him. And the only one who still remembers the things that were erased. Once again, I am the record keep. We are literally the bow keeper. Just like Dainsleaf. The keeper of the Erminsol branches. The keeper of the Erminsol memories. The record keeper. The bow keeper. Traveler? Call me Dane. Hey, what's wrong? You look so upset. There are things that have happened that only I can remember. I have to tell you the truth. I'm Dainsleep. <laughs> With a heavy heart, you piece back together the story that was broken and scattered across time. There once was one named the Balladia, created by the Electro Archon. He was a puppet who lived among men. After a series of events in Tatara, sooner the Balladia, thinking he had been thrice betrayed, left Inazuma to roam the world beyond. With no trust for humans and only loathing for the gods, he bore his grudge for years as he grew in strength, then returned to Inazuma to take his revenge. He tried in vain to become a deity with a gnosis and ended up losing everything. Finally, he entered Erminsul and learned the truth behind his betrayal. Knowing now that his entire life was built on lies, he did the unthinkable in an attempt to reverse his tragic fate. <sighs> That's quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermin's soul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. So, you believe this person really existed, and we just don't remember him because... Well, because he literally changed the world? Mm -hmm. Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. 
That's why there's no information about him in Ermansoul, and it also explains why any changes to Ermansoul wouldn't affect him. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. You can say that again. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. Mm, I'm really not sure. We were enemies after all. I don't know his perspective on all this, so I can't say why he did something so extreme. Did he want to reset everything or save someone, or did he want to completely undo his existence? Uh, I mean, there's no... Like, listen, the way that he said it, Kabuki Mono and Baladia will no longer exist. It's clear he wanted to undo the existence of those two entities. It's clear that maybe saving somebody might have been a, 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 a thought in the back of his head or something, especially from the teaser and stuff. But that doesn't change the fact that he wanted to completely undo the existence of those two entities. Like, it doesn't. Everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for all. Maybe that's all there is to it. Nuh-uh. I still remember the question he asked. He asked me specifically, and my hesitation gave him his answer. I hesitate because I witnessed Greater Lord Ruka Devata erase her own existence, but I can't tell Nahida that. To put it another way, I know why the Baladia was so sure it could work, but I can't tell them that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? I just feel empty. He chose such a radical option, and yet... It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Yes. Once the Baladir realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And if he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The Balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the Doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermansoul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but it seems like he got nothing in return. See, I'm curious because I still see people saying he wanted to destroy himself to give them a second chance. That's depressing, which I kind of understand. But at the same time, it's only destroying a part of himself. He, would, he was always still going to be him. He was always still going to remember everything by, by the looks of things. It's just, it's so strange. I guess we'll figure out more soon. He changed the world in many ways, and yet the dead still can't get a second chance. Those fated to a tragic end could not be saved. It's not only now, though, that the dead still didn't get a second chance. It's that, what about, like, the loved ones that know of the names that, that caused that death? Now they just don't know who did it. Now it's just a stranger. Now what about, like, Raiden Shogun? I'm curious to see if any voice lines are going to be changed or anything. What exactly did he want to fight back against? The betrayals in his life, or did he wish he'd never existed at all? Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm. Found it. Okay. This should be the one. It turns out that I have a strange way of confirming everything he has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Okay. Interesting. Surprisingly, the information is presented to you in a way that resembles a fairy tale. Is this a fairy tale? Who wrote it? This matches everything that I said. I authored this record myself. Huh? Excuse me? Huh? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the balladeer? When combined with the traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Yo! Hold on! So this record survived from the past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. 
But Erminsoul can change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Erminsoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Erminsoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew he'd remember everything. She just fucking... This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Erminsoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one he told us. The now erased life of the Balladeer. Interesting. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. Jesus. But the monster soon found <laughs> solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. Mm. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. This is cute. <laughs> Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Aww. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, you are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this? Abogus. The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water. Clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, the foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together. But the little bird did not have long left to live. Oh. It passed away soon after. The boy. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. Oh, man. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. That was really good. The art was stunning, dude. Hmm. We solved it! Well, I won't go that far. I don't know if it's solved. I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. Yep. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step, 
Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they packed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. Multiple, multiple Hyman occasions. Has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. Yeah. The balladier agreed to help me look for information about the descenders, and although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail: that Conria was where your twin first came into this world. Yeah. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatuli, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. Better fucking fix that, because that's going to really fucking suck, not going to lie. Never had this feeling before. It feels like life is as insignificant as a feather. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. If it has all actually ended in this way, which I don't think it has, it can't have done. Because we still haven't seen him in his new outfit, so no, it definitely hasn't. But this is literally how I feel about it. Paimon has just voiced how I feel about it right now if it was to end like this. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend. But the question still troubles us. Hmm. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. Mm -hmm. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Mahira's right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take him out for a walk to clear his head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Okay, fair. Let's go get a snack for one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! Oh, sure like dude. It must be really tough being the only one who remembers all that. But Paimon's always here to help cheer you up. <laughs> This is this. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. This quest is just making me sad now. <laughs> There's gotta be more to it. There's gotta be. We'll see. We're here. What should we eat first? Uh, I have a nagging feeling like there's something I'm missing. Something important that I'm forgetting. Hey, are you gonna answer or what? Wait, what? Sorry, it's just give me a minute. I'm still processing. Something you're missing. <sighs> Whatever you want. Well, Paimon will be right here when you figured stuff out. Then we can get something to eat. Come on, Brain. Let's dig this out. It's got to be in there somewhere. It was something about Ermin Sol and deleting oneself. Great Lord Ruka Devata, forbidden knowledge, Nahida. Have you figured it all out? Yes, that was it. Great Lord Ruka Devata. She said that no one could erase themselves from existence, not even her. Otherwise, why would she need to create her own reincarnation in Lesser Lord Kusinala to do the deletion for her? There would be no point. Uh, why'd you jump up all of a sudden? No, I can't tell Paimon she doesn't know about Great Lord Ruka Devata. Can we not just fucking tell her at this point? <laughs> but this is a crucially important detail. It's simply not possible for the Baladier to completely erase his own existence, in which case the question is what happened to him. Well, it would be if he classes the Baladier as a completely separate entity, maybe, and he's, he's a puppet. Excuse me, boss. There seems oh to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Here we go. Okay. Hey! Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? Wait, wait, wait! No, not you! That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsetias and ran off. Look. If you're gonna help out here, 
You can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? He doesn't or have a vision yet. He got too many distractions. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Mm. Who's that guy? You know him or something? That guy's the balladeer. He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, who? so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. I was You're welcome, uh, what, I guess. What, what, what? But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias, and I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Uh, leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. So why you being so weird? I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a, a drifter or something? Or a wanderer? Uh, that's right, I am. Uh, we can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey, what do we do now? Let's follow him. Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you. Interesting, interesting. Follow the person you just saw. Okay, this is getting weird, dude. This is getting weird. So sus, dude. Something's, something's just not right. <sighs> yeah, this'll do. Mm. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Isn't that a bit too cruel? Shush. Oh, all right. <laughs> this should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. If I wasn't seeing this with my own eyes, I would never believe it. Yet me either. Huh? Oh, God. Do you, you remember us? There. Is there something I can help you with? There is absolutely no fucking shot you don't remember us. You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. You're right, we were following you. Ah, <sighs> have we met before? No, we haven't met. But you know me? I have no recollection. It's complicated, but I do know you. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. I can prove it. You're a puppet. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? <gasps> you were right! The look on his face! I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. The star I want to take you, dude, yeah, because his, his combat voices don't make any sense. There's got to be more to okay, it. I'm not judging yet. But please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Mm -hmm. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes. I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm. And he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. Fair. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? All right. Then let's return to the city. Jesus Christ, dude. Return to the grocery stall. Um, I, uh, my faith is is still there. It is dwindling, though. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm extremely fucking worried. I'm kind of hoping he's just fucking bullshitting this. Oh. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Friends, best Something's friends. Something's come up, 
and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Hell yeah. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world. Like you had nowhere to be, and didn't even care that it was raining. <laughs> Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you oh. should go live your life. <laughs> but I don't... I like the, the, the other guy. <laughs> No, you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Hmm. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. Okay. <laughs> I'm so fucking nervous. We Jesus go. Christ. Off we go. Is that a fucking computer screen she's looking at? <laughs> Is she playing Genshin Impact? <laughs> What's wrong? Huh? Are you? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything. Does he not even remember? So, yeah, quite an you tell us, Locusinelli, what happened to the Grand Bazaar. You say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. But these two claim that they know me. And that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... I would? Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. Why wouldn't you call it the past? I don't like to rely on using terms like this often. But in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a previous incarnation. Oh, like a past life or something? Uh, I... Yes. <sighs> something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Mm -mm. Okay, I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? So far away that you can't perceive it. Bro, he tried to kill us a fucking month ago. Mm -mm. I... No, no, no. Um... Uh... Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. We're just trying to think where to start. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear. But I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Oh, God. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did. And many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go, or you'll never be happy. Now I had to tell the Wanderer about his past. I gave everything I had, but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, 
That's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place in time, a chain of cause and effect, a cycle of karma and consequence. Mm -hmm. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. True. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. We were literally each other's enemies, yeah. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? You know what, good question. Let's just go back to monster at this point, dude. I feel like they're going to do something to redeem everything that has gone on so far because Paimon is literally embodying my own internal thoughts. He's got so much to answer for, but we can't make him talk because he doesn't remember anything. Uh, what a weird situation. Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's all true. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Please, I want to see them for myself. I want to experience my own transgressions. Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet. With no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to. To fill the void within me. Except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Jesus. Well. As you wish. Now we're gonna get to see. Maybe Wait, he will get to fight that? the this boss. One's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Okay. Oh, good point. Given your babysitting um, time, unique situation, we better keep an eye on you. Understood. He's too nice. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. Teleport waypoint unlocked. This? Wait, I'm talking to him. No matter what lies ahead, I'll face it. Whatever it takes. I'm just sorry that you have to join me for the whole thing. <laughs> it's time to get ready. Fine. Oh, use not hit a skill? Oh, true. Time to face the music. The memories of a certain puppet. He can be the Baladia Harbinger of the Fatui, and he can also be the Kabuki Mono, who was once sighted in the Tatarasuna. Oh, God. Okay. This looks like Inazuma. Mm. Right now, you're in a dream I created using information extracted from your memories. This looks exactly like the fucking Golden Apple Kazuha part did. <laughs> These memories will show you the raw truth, but be aware that enemies may react just like in the real world. Please be careful. Sounds like an immersive experience. It's a good thing we came along. True. You don't need to do this for me. I don't deserve your protection. I'm doing this for knowledge. <laughs> we never give up halfway. Well, we had you once, but that was your doing. And now we're just finishing the job. All right. Thanks. Wanderer, this is the Shake Pavilion. In your Balladeer incarnation, this is where the Electro Archon placed you after your creation. You had a great many memories here. Is that because this is kind of like his birthplace? Mm. You could say that, in a sense. You'll see why shortly. I hear footsteps. This place is huge! <gasps> I can't believe the landslide didn't fill it in. Oh god. I wonder who built it? The Crystal Marrow Miners? No, there's no way. Look at this exquisite construction work, and so well preserved, too! No mining crew would be capable of this. Hmm? There's someone passed out on the ground. Oh, God. Uh, who are you? Y you're awake. What happened? How'd you get stuck here? Are you injured? Huh. 
not a scratch. <sighs> and these fine clothes. Who are you? The the car. I, I did say before that we've seen a lot of the domain stuff in use and the stuff with the golden apple in use of the game so far, including in Nahida's story quest. And I was like, I could imagine them using the the Kazuha one for Scaras. They have literally done the exact same thing. Yeah, like with the with the Scaras stuff, looking into the the. But it was shadows in the in the Kazuha one, I guess. Um, and now we're seeing actual things. That's interesting. It's pretty cool. I I do like this way of doing things, but it is like identical. This man is Katsuragi, deputy to Torichiyo's adopted son, Mikoshi Nagamasa. He found the balladeer in Shake Pavilion and took him back to Tatarasuna. And the rest is history. Well, it used to be. In the original version of events, Katsuragi was ultimately killed by Nagamasa. Uh. Let me get you out of here. Our people are nearby. H hang in there. During the Tatarasuna incident, Niwa was murdered by the doctor, disguised as a mechanic. The balladeer, then known as the Kabukimono, disappeared not long after. As the second-in-command at Tatarasuna, responsibility for what had happened fell to Mikoshi Nagamasa. Yep. But Katsuragi had sworn lifelong loyalty to Nagamasa after the latter had once saved his life. At Katsuragi's insistence, Nagamasa killed him to put an end to the Tatarasuna incident. <sighs> Man. Katsuragi seems like he was a good guy. He looks like a warrior. Oh. Uh. He has a kind face. Why couldn't he live a long and happy life? Well, we don't have Wanderer in the party either. That's interesting. I thought maybe this would be like a trial domain for him. It's different, though. I mean, it's going to be slightly different. I'm saying the concept is identical, though. It's an, literally an identical concept. Nagamasa, I found this young guy in a cave sealed off by a landslide. He doesn't remember his name. Well, we need to call you something. I hear the workers are calling you the Kabuki Mono. <sighs> That's fine with me. Katsuragi, report to Niwa. Tell him we have someone new joining us. Interesting. Cut control, non-vision wielders? I mean, we literally have the Traveler, and I'm not even saying he needs to have powers. Could just be pure physical with no abilities to show us that that's a thing. Huh? Oh. Huh? What are we doing back here? Oh, God. I hear voices. What? <laughs> I hear voices in my head. <laughs> Whoa, this is where you were born? <gasps> Tatalia. It's pretty, but there's nobody here. It's a child. <laughs> oh, you're sick. Oh, it's his sick friend. I was abandoned, like you. I lived here for a while at first, but there's nothing for us here. We can't stay. Okay. I heard my mom and dad used to make swords. But the factory manager died, and then my dad got sick. <coughs> mm. He kept coughing all the time, just like me. Then mom started coughing too. But you can't. You promised me. Yup. We're family now. We're going to be together forever and ever. This child didn't have a name. Or rather... The balladeer didn't know what to call him. His father died before he could name him. Jesus. After his mother died, the child stayed in their straw hut alone. Some of the neighbors helped to raise him. After leaving Tatarasuna, the balladeer ran into this child who didn't have a name, just like him. They made a promise to live together. What happened to the child then? He died from his illness while he was still very young. The balladeer came home one day and found that he had stopped breathing. Hey! What's wrong? Say something! Mm. You promised me we could be family! Jesus. You're no different from Niwa and all the others. The voice you acting did, Raiden. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The voices have gone. It looks like the memory ends here. Let's keep going. 
God damn. Okay, we're getting deeper and fucking deeper at this point. Yeah, Patrick did a fucking incredible job. My god. Absolutely incredible job. Ya yeet. I'm looking for chests. Oh, that small last card that toppled the Tower of Sanity. I mm. you're blocking my path. I come not to obstruct you. I've been waiting. What you are truly is a weapon. One that could be wielded with an iron will. Or you could continue to drift aimlessly. Are you trying to win me over? A long-fated rebellion has begun. Why not take your place at the banquet and join those who shall feast? God damn, the voice of the jester, dude. I'm really hoping we get to see him, dude. I lost hope before, but now maybe not. Maybe we can see him in a, in a, in a... <gasps> Our flashback! This place is dark. Yeah, fucker. Uh, Hyman knows this place. It's the Delusion Factory in Inazuma. In the original version of events, the Traveler once encountered the Balladeer here. Mm. Such a creepy atmosphere. And so familiar. I remember this. It was an unsettling place. Hey, look over there. Well, well, my fair lady. Is this rundown factory and these incompetent fools all for me? Wow. You shouldn't have. She's back! Let's go! <laughs> Holy fucking booba, dude. Oh my god, I'm staying in this fucking sub. So hey, Nida, keep me here, dude. Keep me here. She's coming back at some point, I fucking promise you. Huh. What do you have to gain from belittling your subordinates? My god. You might not want to admit it, but you are a part of this plan. Perhaps you find fighting in the abyss to be a more meaningful use of your time? Oh, but of course, even this pales in comparison to being experimented on by the doctor. Hmm. <laughs> what a sharp tongue you have. Funny how negotiating never seems to be your strong suit. For the task ahead, I suggest you keep your true feelings to yourself. Hmm. <laughs> Save your breath. I know what I have to do. I'm sure you think so, but I still think you need to hear it. Don't start thinking you're invincible, and don't let your emotions get in the way. <laughs> Surely you're not worried about me. I just can't have you getting in my way. You and Child never fail to find ways to complicate things. <laughs> I'm merely lighting a little fire in this chaotic nation, but you, being tossed out like trash must make you want to destroy it completely. Do you remember the last time you were here? That was a lot of swordsmiths you killed. I'm sure the descendants of the ride in Gokaden are still suffering the consequences now. Man. Look at you. Oh, don't get so sentimental. Now, give that poor little tongue of yours a rest and stop pretending like you're above everyone else. By then, see you at the victory feast. Jesus. Poor little tongue. <laughs> She's playing with fire talking to me like that. Who does she think she is? <sighs> Forget it. Someone might find me here any minute now. I should prepare to give them a warm welcome. Oh, she's coming back, dude. She's coming back at some point. She is. I am calling it right now, dude. There's too much foreshadowing to not have that happen. The plot does not end here. There is more of this story to come. The plot thickens. Wanderer. Are you able to continue? Yes. Please don't worry about me. Okay. Why are you staring at me in silence? What? <laughs> Can't you think of a nicer way to express yourself? I'm under oh. no obligation to be nice to you. Besides, I thought nothing mattered to you except results in your own interests. Isn't that uh. right? Which... <laughs> nice. Muddle-headed puppet. You're only number six because you can take more abuse than other humans. Do you really count that as an asset? You're about as much fun to be around as a raging inferno. <laughs> but before we murder each other, 
It'd be best if we finish our duties. Duties. <laughs> Wait, that was an interesting voice line. Holy shit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. She might be insufferable, but she's still fucking cool. <laughs> Same as him. Oh, what the fuck? Looks oh. Looks like we have arrived in Sumeru. Yeah, this... Okay. Uh, is that? Considering that Amorta's sage, Nafis, refused to join this project, I'll take part in the experiment in his place. Welcome. I look forward to a fruitful collaboration. <sighs> huh. When do we start? You seem impatient. You should know that becoming a god is far from a trivial affair. Fucking sage, dude. The biological transformation is a lengthy process. As such, I too would recommend that we commence as soon as possible. In the event that a successful connection is established, his body will become permanently bound to the machine, and he will be unable to move independently of it. This motherfucker deserved way more of a punishment than he got. I don't care what anyone says, dude. I know Nahida's fucking, like, like softer than a lot of other people. Dude, she, she should have sentenced him to actual imprisonment for life. Like, what he got was nothing compared to what he did. At all. Nothing worse than what I've been through before then, Doctor. You were the most resilient test subject I ever came across. Thanks to you, I was able to garner a great deal of information. Mm. Alas, after that, you Who's were under orders to remain guy? in the abyss. We barely saw each other, and it became difficult to further refine the knowledge I had gained. Remain in the abyss. That was gracefully worded. Ever wonder what they think if they knew that nothing matters to you? Apart from your crazy experiments? I think most people know I that. I suggest you speak to me in a more respectful tone, Scaramouche. The mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. The doctor again? <sighs> that was uncomfortable to watch. It makes me think the... the... Whole f not just Tartag, but like the whole Fatui have trained in the Abyss. Because why would, why would Scar have been in the Abyss? Interesting. I don't know. That person gives off a very sinister energy. He's the doctor. He's behind all of this. It's normal for him to give you the creeps. He scares the bejeevers out of Paimon. <sighs> because his body is more resilient, Senora said it. That doesn't explain anything about why he would be in the abyss in the first place. Like, what was he doing down in the fucking abyss? I know Tartag quote-unquote fell down there by accident as far as we know, but now we know two of the F Fatui have been into the abyss for some reason. Like, I don't know. Let's move on. Seems a little bit too coincidental, you know? His character story quest talks about it. We'll check it later then. You're a god. Do you think I'm evil? If you accept that he is you, just as you are you, then yes, you are evil. Mm. In your eyes, are there any differences between humans and puppets? Do you think there are any differences between your present self and your previous and future incarnations? If not, then what are the differences between humans and puppets? I don't understand that line. Do you think there are any differences between yourself, uh, your present self, and your previous and future incarnations, which are still puppets though, no? But if he doesn't think there's a difference, then what are the differences? I don't understand it. Whoever has tasted the joys and sorrows of life in the human realm is human. Whoever has loved and lost, cried with grief, howled with rage at the tragedy of death that eclipses the miracle of life, they are human too. Goddamn. <sighs> I've seen enough of my past. If possible, I'd like to reclaim the sins that are mine to bear. No matter the consequences, I won't run from blame or punishment. Whatever I am due, let it come to pass. Are you saying... Can you return my memories to me? Huh? But won't that mean you'll lose your current identity? I've always believed that human lives follow a set of rules. With each person being a collection of past experiences. As a puppet living in a human world, my life is subject to the same rules. Regaining your memories means reverting completely to your previous incarnation. Hmm. <laughs> All the emotions that you discarded will return to you. Are you sure you want to do this? Maybe this is where he's going to get the vision because Nahida said when he was going into the tree for the first time, like, he's got to understand things to move forward. 
I've lived with a void in my chest my whole life. My creator didn't need me. And ever since I awoke, I've just drifted from one place to the next. Mm. But then I met you. And I finally realized that reclaiming my missing sins might be my one opportunity to become my true self. Is this the true meaning of uh, Greater Lord Rukadavata's words? A person can't erase themselves, and even though the original Baladir is gone, this person will live on in his place. Are a person's sins an inexplicable part of their destiny too? I've always felt I have an innate tendency to yearn for something more, in a way that goes deeper than for most people. But for all my soul-searching as a Shugenja, I've never fully understood it. Looking at it now, it seems that I brought this curse upon myself. Mm. So I beg you, grant me this opportunity to gain a purpose, to change my destiny, and end my wandering. Very well. Since your mind is made up, I will return to you that which is yours. Oh, God. Oh, cutscene time. You have made your decision. Now, take this. Oh, Second shit. Three. A puppet? What's he doing here? It's... You're a human as far as I'm concerned. Everyone's here. Wonderful. The Doctor. What a fine blade. Nagamasa will be thrilled. This is... my... <sighs> Is that him getting his vision? Was I right? This won't be the end! Wait, what? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> the motherfucker just pulled a fusion, huh? From Dragon Ball... to fight one on one with the boss i saw that coming a mile off okay oh the pog music again dude oh that's the edge of the arena fuck Woo! motherfucker wait phase two are we gonna get a phase two oh shit imbecile get out of my sight Disappeared. <laughs> did we win? I think we did. Expect? I'd never lose to that. It's literally you. <laughs> There's the tone of voice again. You're definitely back to your old self. <laughs> Wait, but it was you inside that thing too. <laughs> what have you got to be smug about? Dumbass. Sorry. I'm harsh on myself and everyone else. Just the way I am. Now you've recovered your memories. The past will catch up with you. <laughs> you sound like you're concerned about me. 
But don't worry. Thanks to you, even if I didn't change a thing, at least I now know the truth. The memory recovery seems to have been a success. This dream has served its purpose. I'm so curious though. Just because he has his memories back doesn't mean everybody else remembers. So he says he hasn't changed a thing, but in reality, he's changed a shit ton. No? Am I dumb? Come on. Let's continue this outside. Okay. Me, myself, but not I. Leave the memory. Welcome back, Traveler, Paimon, Balladeer. <sighs> it feels like we just went on a really long journey. Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> you don't like being addressed by that name? It's fine. But I was just thinking, I should probably change it. Again? <laughs> you won't go by the Balladeer anymore? After learning about everything the doctor did... There's no way I can carry on using a name connected to him. Fair, honestly. I'm not planning on returning to the Fatui. And they wouldn't take me back anyway. Recent events will have affected a lot of people. And they might not even remember who the sixth is. So, you're quitting the Fatui for good? Let's call it a tactical retreat. <sighs> it's like you said, Lesser Lord Kusanali. Everything may look futile, but it wasn't completely meaningless. At least I made a lot of people forget about me. But that doesn't mean your own past has disappeared. It actually means you just copped out of, 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 of a lot of different shit, to be honest. Of course. And your main goal, for which you gave up everything you had, you weren't able to achieve it. I hope you can see and understand that. Changing the world, changing the past, changing the fates of other people, these are not simple things to accomplish. What you are looking for is complete annihilation. But this is just a fantasy. Even if the Balladier is removed from existence, the world will not heed your will. Maybe Senora is still alive in this version of history. This is the problem. This isn't a version of history. There's no version of, like, nobody is alive or dead that wasn't originally alive or dead. Nothing has been changed. It's just that the bad shit that this motherfucker has done in the past has been forgotten. Like, the, the people that it has affected don't remember who did it now, which fucking sucks. Indeed. <laughs> How ridiculous. Do you regret doing all that when you've gotten so little in return? Even if I'm completely worthless, there's nothing in the world worth regretting. Wow. Lesser Lord Kusanali, you purposely left that information in Nermansol, didn't you? Yes, and I took pains to make sure that you'd acquire that information naturally. Why would you go to such lengths? You trying to win me over too? In all honesty, your past experiences have made you a useful asset to Sumeru and to me. Winning you over was indeed a part of my plan. But before that, I wanted to tell you the truth about your past. If all I wanted to do was use you, then I'd be no different from the doctor. Very clever. <laughs> I guess you could say that's one of my virtues. Utility to others is what gives me worth. So if embracing my sins is what it takes to make me useful again, so be it. I took a point. We haven't heard the trailer line of Dottori saying something about your utility doesn't make you invincible or whatever, indestructible. Uh, Nahida doesn't see you that way. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Oh, have we? You're the good guys. My head's all over at this You're point. We did? Okay. And all that. Sorry if I have a slightly different perspective on things, but I don't feel like I've been duped. The wisest leaders are fated to end up with the best helpers. I can live with that. I'm glad you're able to think of it in that way. Traveler, in the future, I'll continue to search Soul more deeply and see what secrets can be uncovered. He including the beginning of your twin's journey recorded in Soul. What exactly happened before and after that point? I want to know as well. Thank you. Let's hope we can find some answers. I will try. Traveler. Yes? After I dove into the information torrents in Ermansoul, why did you go to Inazuma? Because I wanted to know what you changed. So that's how you found out whose fate had changed. And how. Me well, meeting nobody's? whatever your reasons, you did me a favor. 
and I'll do everything I can to pay it back. Uh, I didn't do all this for a reward. Please don't make it sound like I'm extorting you. Borrowing and returning are the only real relationships between individuals. I'll balance the books one day. Don't you worry. That's not true. A relationship between two people is not simply a ledger that can be reset to zero. I think deep down you realize this. People who show up in your life don't just evaporate like water drops and leave nothing behind. There is no such thing as balancing the books. Some things in this world can never be brought back. And they can never be changed. Which is why there is emotion in the human world. Everything that you feel is real and lasting. And whatever is missing in you will not be made whole. Ugh. To be human is to live with imperfections. You can choose whether or not you want to be human. Hmm. But humans can't live without a heart, can they? Anyway, I gave up trying to become a human a long time ago. Yeah, now he wants to become a fucking god! You understand what pain is perfectly well, even without a heart. You're just bearing your feelings. The past is set in stone, but you can keep moving on. And the longer your future lasts, the shorter your past will become, until one day, it is but a tiny fraction of your life. Sounds like you've got a future planned out for me. I hope you can give Nahida a chance. Why are we talking to him like this, Ned? <laughs> give Nahida a fucking chance? I, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Why, why, why are we just okay with all of this? I hope Nahida can give him a chance. Everything's ended up being pretty darn complicated. Hyman doesn't even know where to start, but... The most important thing now is that you need to follow Nahida. Otherwise, all our efforts will have been for nothing! Because of all the events that transpired? I'm not being funny. I, d I don't think a lot really would have caused me to be so happily trusting of this guy after all the events that just transpired. I really don't. It's been cool to learn about him and stuff, and he's a fucking cool character. But trusting him straight away after all that? Then I guess I'll be no. helping you from behind the scenes from now on. No fucking shot. Oh. I'm glad that you've accepted our proposal. Why don't you choose a new name to celebrate? Hmm? Oh, oh, oh! Paimon wants to pick an ugly nickname for you, too! Why? Okay. <laughs> because because Paimon still doesn't like you that much! <laughs> then I hope we don't see much of each other in the future. Call this Garakuchi. A <laughs> first gift. You can say it out loud, but I know that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Uh. The Traveler and Paimon have helped you a lot. If you can't decide on a new oh, name, God. maybe you can ask them for ideas. That's a fucking terrible idea. You want to sit up for dead? No, Paimon only does nicknames. If it's a serious name you're after, it's all yours. <laughs> That's a fucking terrible idea, dude. Uh, have you got anything? Wait, what? Wait, what? Name change rules? Wait. <laughs> you can obtain the item an appellative stroke from the Arcor Quest interluded versions of Genesis, which will allow you to change Eons Adrift Wanderer Animal's name? Please note that some names cannot be utilized in this change. Once you have re renamed this character, some interfaces in the game going forward will display the name that you have chosen. There is a limit on the number of times you can rename this character, so do it with care. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? Pulling at the name of This is so fucking weird, dude. Wait, this is this uh, This is weird. I'm gonna call him Hard Hat. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Do you think in the future, if he's involved in any quest, where the name's gonna be replaced with the name that we give him? Or if it, do you think it's gonna stay as Wanderer? It'll be replaced. So if I call him Patrick, and it makes sense because it's his VA. And it'd be hilarious because if someone says, is that Scaramouche? He could be like, no, this is Patrick. <laughs> it said, be careful. How is this not careful? <laughs> Wait. Oh my God, I know the one true name. You fucking dumbasses. Those of you that said it would never happen. It's about to fucking happen. She's coming back, baby. 
She's coming back, baby! Yes! I've actually got to call him La Senora. Do you think the game will let me? It just says no spaces. There's no way it can say no to just Senora. It's Senora! Serious. <laughs> oh, I'm dead serious, baby! She's back! <laughs> Let's go! Senora means win today, baby! Woo! Let me give it some more thought. Okay. Wait, what? No! Uh, have you got anything? What? What do you mean? No! Don't deny the Senora coming back! You're, you're, you're fucked in the head for that! You're so fucked up! Why? Why? Why wouldn't you let it happen? I think Scaracucci would be allowed. <laughs> what if you get back? Yeah, obviously Scaracucci is not actually allowed. This is a great name. Just call him Wanderer? That's so fucking boring. No way I'm just calling him Wanderer. Does anyone know how many times you get to rename him? One extra time? <laughs> This is hard. This is a hard choice, dude. Skymon. Like Paimon, but Scaraboosh. Bongo Head is actually good. Bro, if I call him anything, it's going to be Hard Hat. Because Hard Hat actually makes sense. He's got a big ass hat. And Hard Hat was the best of the Pokemons. I might actually call him Hard Hat. Hard Hat's life ongoing. Not just as our Pokemon, but as our now apparent pet. <laughs> Do ass face? I'd get banned. I honestly liked Patrick as well, but chat made me feel insecure about the name. Fuck it. I'm calling him Patrick, dude. I'm sticking with my first choice. That, because it's the VA's name, it makes sense. And then it's funny if no one understands why. And then if somebody says, is that Scaramouche or is that the Wanderer? We could be like, no, this is Patrick. It's great. It's a fantastic choice. I'm calling him Patrick. Fuck it. I'm calling him Patrick. It's cool. Are hey, you sure? Hi, Patrick. Yes, I think this'll do. Oh, all right. If you say so. All right, Patrick. Let's go! There. Now you have a name of your own. What about a nickname? Are you done yet? Oh, God. Uh, I... Still thinking. Stop rushing me! Not doubling down on Senora shaking my head? The game literally wouldn't let me call him Senora. It's Senora-ist. I tried. Take your time. I don't need to see you again until you've thought of one. <laughs> Patrick! <laughs> this is cool, dude. This is cool. Hey, my man. <laughs> my man. What do you plan to do next? Everyone who manipulated me and made me suffer will have to pay the price. You mean the Fitui? The doctor, at least. The Tore. Now that your stance has changed, I believe your future path will change accordingly. But it won't be immediate. You still need some time to compose yourself. Hmm. One more thing. Oh god, what now? There are still some descendants of the Raiden Gokuden living in Inazuma. Some of them know. Well, they ought to know about the connection between Raiden Gokuden and myself. I don't plan to leave Sumeru for the time being. If you see them in Inazuma, Please tell them that I was the one responsible for the Raiden Gokuden's downfall. Even though the events have been erased from the world, they still deserve to know the truth. I see. That is up to you. Hmm. Huh? But if we do that, then... It's fine. Let them stab their blades into my chest if they so desire. Maybe that's how it always should have been. You know what? I prefer Patrick over Wanderer. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> no nonsense. I like it. All right. Let's call it a day. Goodbye, wise deity. And you too. He's gone. What he went through today would have been like living an entire lifetime in an instant. He'll need some time to calm down. Yeah, true. But even so, after everything that's happened, he doesn't seem quite as fierce anymore. There were some bumps along the way, but it's all over now. So we can finally go eat? Paimon is starving. Thank you both. I hope you will find somewhere nice to go and relax for a while. Hmm. I've got it! I can end my novel with some words from Mikoshi Nagamasa. You mean because everyone else in the story is dead? It's a few things I yeah, want to check after I this. I heard that Mikoshi Nagamasa died at a ripe old age. He's the perfect fit to be the narrator of the epilogue. Okay. Makes sense. 
The dark clouds had dissipated, but they continued to cast their shadow in Mikoshi Nagamasa's mind for decades to come. Then, one night, as an old man, he had a dream. On the night when that prized blade, the Daitatara Nagamasa, was forged, the people rejoiced, and there was painting, dancing, and drinking. All these expressions of joy melted down in the furnace fire and turned into red clouds that rallied around the final <gasps> sunrise that Mikoshi Nagamasa saw in his lifetime. Life is a story too long to be told, a journey that you must walk to behold. <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> That's my favorite thing about this whole quest. I'm not even kidding. Wait, go talk to Nahida again first. What in here? <laughs> it's good. Ah. Oh. Thank you so much. Please get some good rest. You must be exhausted. You know, take a shower, take a duke duke. Look at this new. Yeah. Always with the duke duke, dude. <laughs> They know what they're doing with the Duke Nukes chat. If they knew that the community loved it the first time, they're gonna say it again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> There's a couple of things I wanna check before making a full judgment on the quest, I think. Uh, which I feel like need to be checked first, so. We will check that when the quest is over and we'll see. I wanna check a few of the, uh, I wanna check a few character voice lines, a few NPC things. Where the hell? Oh, it's here, okay. <sighs> it's about time we had a break. As soon as you stop, all the tiredness and hunger comes rushing back. Rest up, Paimon. I'll buy some delicious treats as a reward. Wow, great! Huh? Look at that vase. What about it? It's the smashed one that you smashed. Did someone break it while they were cleaning the room or something? Like, Paimon doesn't remember there being a cleaner. Wait, what? That night we said he upon my vaunted to the table after being startled by something to do with the balladier and broke the vase. But the balladier erased his existence. He changed the world. So why is this vase? I, what, I thought we came to the conclusion that actual things didn't change. Just memories did. I. You sound lost and confused. Who the fuck is that? I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Uh... Huh? Is there someone here talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Wait, is, is, is this is this Perhaps Isteroth? a god may have a slim chance. But for anyone else... Al who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate, like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? It does sound like Miko's VA. History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. You are unseen! They, they, they... <laughs> they wouldn't show us folklores this early. Why? That can't be folklore. The voice has disappeared. And who the heck was that? And what were they doing coming out of nowhere and saying all that scary stuff? Oh, bro, if that was this one, that'd be really cool. And then we could get Venti's second awkward story quest, and then we could be <laughs> I'm drooling. Believe my eyes, does she mean I should trust my memories? Uh, anyway, that face is still lying there broken on the ground. Should Paimon go get someone to clean it up? Chill. No, you chill. We just heard a random ass voice. It feels wrong just leaving it there. Just a moment. Bye, Mom. I'll be right back. Okay. Bye. I wonder what else awaits me in the future. It has to be a descender. I don't know how you can so confidently say that. <laughs> Inversion of Genesis. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. 
The brush with which you may bestow a new name upon a certain person. Once the new name has been given, it cannot be changed. Couple of things I want to check. Huh? Have you heard? It seems that the Sumeru Academia has made a real mess of one of their big projects. The six Darshans have been left leaderless as a result, which has forced the weak Dendro Arco to take over. Wait, so do you mean that something terrible has happened? Terrible? No, not at all. It's wonderful news, in fact. I've heard that Lord Dottore managed to infiltrate Sumeru during the chaos and perform a great work in the Saritsa's name with almost no effort at all. Is that so? Just as expected from the second Harbinger. Huh? You don't seem happy judging by your tone. It is indeed good that the Harbinger succeeded, but I'm reminded that Lady Signora also succeeded at Inazuma only to... Look at you, you are worrying too much. From how I see it, we don't have many people, and that's fine. With someone as powerful as Lord Dottori amongst our ranks, it shouldn't matter if the rest of our seats remain empty. But enough about the 8th Harbinger. It is said that the 6th Harbinger's seat has been left vacant for years. Is that not cause for... Concern? Mm-mm. Uh, I don't think I have Tartag voice lines anyway. Uh, but we can check. Because I assume it won't just be... Or maybe it will just be gone. Mm. I, uh, mm -mm. I'm not a fan, dude. I'm not a fan. I'm interested to know what you guys think about that. I saw it coming a mile off, and for all the people that said it will never happen, uh, I hate to say I told you so. I really do, because I didn't want it to happen. It was just too obvious that it was going to happen. They did it well. I'm going to reword that and put it in my own words. The, the quest was incredibly good and makes a lot of sense, and I think they did the best they could with the direction they were going. I just really don't think this was the best direction of going. It does feel like a bit of a cop-out. It was great. I'm happy that he's kind of back to pretty much his old self, but not exactly. It's the overall concept of, of just making people forget all the bad shit that he did. That's just not for me. Oh, that's interesting. Can we check Raiden's voice lines from here and stuff? Raiden's... Is, chat, are, are Raiden's completely gone as well? But it's not really a cop-out because fate will remain the same. Uh, seeing it's not a cop-out, it's fine to have your own thoughts on it. In my thoughts, it 100% is. He has killed people. People that are still alive remember that the Baladia has killed people. The Baladia being wiped from existence means they do not know who killed the person that they know. It's just either some stranger, like those people are probably going to have no closure anymore. They're probably just not going to know. He told us to tell those people the truth. Yes, the select few about the Raiden Gokuden, not the rest of the fucking world who he's affected in that way. It's a cop-out, in my opinion. It is, it is. It might not be as bad as a cop-out as it could have been. It's still a cop-out. Rating out of 10. I think I'd probably give it a, um... I think I'd probably give it, for me personally, a... Um, nah. God, it's... It's, it's really difficult to rate for me because I fucking hate the trope of, uh memory wipes no matter who it is i feel like it takes away so much from the character instead of adding to the character development i'm not gonna lie if it wasn't for that probably a nine i thought it was maybe even more than a nine i think it was a really fucking good quest solely because of the memory wipe stuff for other people forgetting i'm gonna give it like a six or seven probably probably a seven overall probably a seven i can't go as low as six it was still a phenomenal quest but the whole idea behind it I hate, which sucks, but I saw it coming. I mean, at least I saw it coming. I, I prepared well for it, to be honest. Yeah, it was real good, but the memory wipe is ooh for me. Yeah, seven. I give it a seven.